know, earlier in the day, I was down in, a, there's a fair, big fair going on that in uh, Gold San Diego, and I was down there because I had three amateurs fighting. Before every fight, or before every other fight, the referees would come back and have another rules meeting. All day long, they said, listen, if, you've got, if you're in an arm bar and you're not going to tap, we'll tap for you. It's going to happen. But if you're being choked, we're going to let you go out because you're going to wake up feeling fine. Right. That was an amateur fight. A bunch of kids that have never fought before saying, yeah, we'll let you go to sleep because, you know, we're, it's not that bad. And here in the biggest fight of his life, it gets stopped because he, he, I don't know why it got stopped. Oh, uh, it was just ridiculous. Are you excited about it all? What up, what up everybody, and welcome back to yet another Sound of Violence podcast. This is Pulver, I am here with the homie Chris, what up dog? Same old, same old, glad to be back again. Uh, We don't have any major fights this week, but next week we have two barn burners of the cards, as well as my birthday, which I'm stoked for too, and I have that day off. Absolutely, and there has been some crazy fights over the weekend. So despite not having any uh, card that happening this weekend, we decided we would come back because uh, I have heard some good podcasts, which segues me into, we should mention, if you guys have not heard the show before, we go through and break down the MMA podcast we've been listening to for the week. Uh, we let you guys know a podcast we think you should check out podcast think you should skip and a podcast you shouldn't miss uh so why don't we get into format right off the top uh i mean this has been a wild week a lot of fun shows i actually ended up going to an emmy show randomly oh, which yeah. was cool that we'll talk about later shout out to the del mar fair uh and san diego i guess for that matter yeah, uh, san diego. yeah yeah del mar fair san diego is fuck uh but let's go ahead and uh jump into what's your uh podcast or your MMA podcast that you recommend people check out this week? My catch this podcast for this week is Chael Sonnen's You're Welcome uh, with uh, striking coach Clayton Hires. It's a real good one. I, I really liked, enjoyed it. I liked it a lot. He went over the... Belt. I like Clayton Hires in general. Yeah, he's a really chill guy. Smart. Uh, very intuitive. Uh, knows what he's talking he, about. He's goofy, but in a fun way. Like, yeah, yeah, I enjoyed listening to Like a lot to of Chell's friends. <laughs> uh, they had a lot to say about Aaron Pico's uh, very anticipated debut. Unfortunately, it didn't go his way. But both Chael and uh, Coach Hires were talking about how, like, first of all, you're fighting a dude who's had 10 professional bouts you know what I mean like you're oh and oh doesn't matter if you have all the wrestling accolades or boxing golden glove oh, accolades this dude has been in 10 wars you know and uh, all the credit by the way goes to Zach Freeman I believe his name is Zach yep. the ultra boy please change your nickname Freeman yeah it's not um, a good nickname yeah I remember someone on Reddit came up with a better one I'm sure they'll I'll see it again but uh a uh, uh, good performance by him Aaron Pico is only 20 years old so I'm sure he'll get some uh, improve. I mean, he can only get better, they, really. They just need to match him up with it, someone yeah. more his speed. Like, throwing him in... And, and that guy, Freeman, was fucking huge. Yeah, Pico should really be at 145 from what I've been hearing from most people. Yeah, I and, think Chill mentioned that, too. Yeah, and Freeman is very fucking large. He's like 6'1". He's a humongous fucking 55-er. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it, it was, it's a... It, it it seemed like a mismatch going into it, uh, but it turned out to be a mismatch the opposite direction. Um, I don't know how you, I still don't know how someone licenses. I mean, I guess he has the credentials, but still, eight and two guy fighting an O and O guy. Well, well, then again, if you could credential McGregor, I was just about to say, yeah, someone is O and O versus forty nine and O, yeah, boxer, a zero and zero boxer. You can credential anything. Uh, after that, they talked about they think Johnny Hendricks should hang him up. He's done. Chael mentioned he's the number two ranked high school wrestler of all time. And uh, Chael has known him as far as just how strict he is, how uh, disciplined he is, especially when he's fighting at welterweight. I know some people might say, oh, pre-USADA, but the fact of the matter is he's still disciplined. He still made weight, and he showed off his talent. That is not the case from what we saw last week. How would you describe his fight? 
against uh, Tim Boach? Uh, Your would, feelings, at least. My feelings were... I, actually, my feelings were echoed... Uh, I'll give a shout-out right now to the uh, Sean Funky and the Baddest Man podcast. Uh, ben Askren echoed my feelings along with... Uh, Along with Joe Warren, where they just said, "I don't even want. I don't even want to talk about it. It's fucking embarrassing for wrestling, and it's absolutely unacceptable on every level. Like he should retire out of just respect for this sport at this point. Yeah, Uh, because it's fucking embarrassing at this point. Like I don't you. I'm a fat, fat boy." But he is a fatter boy than I am, and I'm I, and I'm we're the same height. I'm much larger than him, but I also do nothing. <laughs> yeah, you know, like for him to be that large, like I wonder if he has like a, a, I should not shout this out because uh, I am one of them, but maybe a drinking problem, <laughs> some kind of issue where you you fucking gain a shitload of weight out of nowhere, but. Uh, yeah, it's it's upsetting, and I am. Um, I, I don't. I worry for Johnny Hendricks. Like I don't. It's not even like fun well, to make fun of him. At anymore. least he can make weight at two hundred five. If we think. See, that's why. It's because like, I think I don't know if oh, this is. Oh, you're right. Okay, Anthony Johnson needs to come yes, out and retire. Yeah. See, what was the podcast I mentioned? I listen. Was it? It might have been Chales. Yeah, yeah. I think Coach Hires said, hey, look what Anthony Johnson did. 170. Yeah, he weight. did. 185. Blue fucking weight at like 194 fuck at 185. It. Yeah. Yeah, yeah fuck Hey, be Kevin Randleman. Fight at 205. Yeah. Uh, I'd watch Johnny Hendricks, John Jones. Or put feed Johnny Hendricks to uh, Dominic Reyes. Ooh, oh. Johnny Hendricks, Jimmy Manoa. Jimmy Manoa. Manoa. Yeah, Manoa. Johnny's got good wrestling. That might be actually be a tough fight for him. Until it gets blasted in, like, the first minute of the fight. Well, yeah, Chris, but... I mean, yeah, (laughs) wrestling, baby. But, uh, anyways, uh, they kept going on and on about that. They were talking about how was Roy's... Or, not Roy's fight. Lorenz uh, Lorenz Larkin versus Diego... uh, Not Diego, goddammit. Douglas Lima. It's a great fight. We should just claim we just watched the Diego Lima fight on Tough this week, so... Yes. And, by the way, for people who... Remember, if we mentioned it last week, me and Chris did watch... The Bellator card at a the- movie theater. It was, was awesome. fucking cool. Yeah, we'll talk about it more in the next um, segment, but it was fucking g- great, and I absolutely yeah. recommend people do that. They they discuss Roy McDonald and what's next for him against uh, Douglas Lima. They said they think they think he won't overlook Douglas Lima. And it should be a barn burner of a fight either way. Yeah, I agree. Uh, they're talking about Daniel Cormier and how he's absolutely ready for John Jones with his new diet game plan, according to Chael's insider knowledge. He said, however, I hope so. John Jones might just have his number no matter what. Uh, they, I think it was Coach Hires who's saying there's an instance in fighting where the older fighter usually almost always loses to the younger fighter in the rematch even faster than before. Whatever. I mean, we'll explain that next week when it comes to 214 anyway at the end of the month. Yeah. Yeah. It's, or the end of July, I should say, but... Um, it also... It generally works like that, but, like, MMA is so weird and fluky sometimes when it comes to yeah. stats that, like... Stats in MMA only work up until they don't, it feels like. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of stats in MMA that were true for a very long time that just end up not being true over the, over the full course of MMA, so... Who knows? But yeah, generally, it's like one it, that I, I feel like the same way about that stat that I do about the if uh, a guy wins, whoever wins the second fight in the trilogy is gonna win the third. That too, yeah. Uh, and the last statistical is that I know they do talk about Canelo versus Triple G, and they're analyzing that. But I won't. Oh, talk you mean it. the real boxing match? Yes, the real boxing match that any boxing fan cares about. It's, it's happening I'm, in September. I'm excited about that. Fight. Oh, I'm, it's I'm extremely be real good. excited. Yeah. I like pissing off all my Mexican friends. Talk about how I think Triple G's gonna win. Oh, but I'm just saying because he's the bigger guy and yeah. usually the bigger way guy, bigger and the way bigger champion usually beats a lighter more champion. And too. that's what Coach Hires was saying, but Chill wasn't buying it. Chill likes Canelo. I get it, the pressure fighter. I think Triple G's more technical. Yeah, I think he's way stronger. Yeah. I know Canelo's a big guy too. And Canelo okay. hits harder, but I just don't see him landing. Uh, yeah. Either way... Um, I think it'll be fucking awesome, though. Shale kind of mentioned near the end, is it so difficult to explain why John Jones is so good that he just might be, even if you're, you don't even have to be spiritual or anything, that he's just chosen by God? Is there a divine <laughs> intervention That's possibility right. here? 
Who knows? I mean, we can't prove or disprove that, so sure. who knows? I That's mean, all I can say is who the fucking knows. I would say probably not, no, because could, that god yeah. would uh, uh, save the pregnant chick he hit. Yes, and that guy would um, have more important things to do. Yeah. <laughs> also, yeah, he probably isn't super stoked on the fact that the dude is constantly shouting out him his name while getting into mad trouble. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, no, I would say probably not, but hey, who knows? Yeah, no. I love you, God. I pray to you. I cheated on my wife years ago. I to be fair, save me. Yeah, to be fair, quite possible that Chael, uh, Chael is also friends with God. Uh, so, yeah. <sighs> okay, sure, yeah. I want to be better friends with God than shit. Yeah, bro. Well, you just haven't gotten high enough yet. Ha. Oh. Yeah, I need to. I need to reach that no, spiritual no, no, fucking yeah. ceiling, man. You're on like atmosphere the, level. The nirva- n- nirvana. Yeah, oh, <laughs> no, you need to get off that atmosphere level and get to that higher. Level. What is that oh. shit they say in Scientology? Your something levels are higher. Oh, you, you're not clear. Your readings. You're, you're <laughs> not clear, bro. You need yeah. to get. Cl- you need to buy your way into getting clear. Yeah, I need to donate ten thousand more dollars yeah. to get to the next tier oh, no. of, of spirituality yeah. supremacy. It's right. Supremacy. Uh, Shouts out to Joe Rogan and Leah Remini's uh, podcast about that shit. Um, anyways, uh, that was a fun episode of You're Welcome. I enjoyed hearing uh, Super fun. Coach Hires. Coach Hires was cool, man. Coach yeah. Hires. And it was funny hearing uh, Cho talk uh, <laughs> about the fight and everything. Um, that leads me into my recommendation for the week. I recommend everybody checks out MMA Depressed Us because I fucking love this show. Uh, if you guys don't know, MMA Depressed Us is a show run by Connor Rebush, Zane Simon, and Phil McKenzie, who Phil McKenzie, if you don't know, is uh, Evil Greg Jackson on Twitter. Um, and they go through on fights when there aren't UFC cards, and they watch an old, uh, uh, three old fights on Fight Pass. A good bad fight, a bad bad fight, and a fight that should have been better, I think. A fight that was they thought was going to be good that wasn't. Something like that. I forget oh, how they phrase yeah. it. Um, but it was a fucking awesome episode, like all of them. I, I've i said this before, but I kind of love Weekends with Art and UFC cards just because of this podcast, which is kind of fucked up as a fan of MMA. Um, but it's awesome. Uh, the first fight they did was Sam Stout versus Cody McKenzie. Uh, they had a, a ton of hilarious Cody McKenzie stories, which you forget how many of them there are. Like, from him getting blood drawn to make weight, to, like, the story where he wore, uh, in, like, 2015, or, or like, 2014, maybe. He's from the, Alaska, right? That yep. explains his insanity. They talk a lot about that. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Uh, actually, uh... What's his face? Uh, Zane Simon is from Alaska as well, and talks oh, about yeah. how yeah, he talks about how he's he's a like feels like a lot of the people uh, he grew up with. Um, let's see. Oh, they talk about the, the actually the fight they covered the Sam Stout fight is the infamous one where Cody McKenzie wears basketball shorts because his sponsor didn't get approved. Oh, so he wore yeah. the basketball shorts with the tag on him still. I think you told me. And about Herb that. Dean pulled the tag off in the middle of the fight. Like, because he's like, that's dangerous to have a tag on your shorts. Um, <clears throat> Phil compared Cody to one of those rats in New York that you see dragging an entire trash bag. Oh, man. Uh, not not in a bad way, though. Like, uh, he's just like, he was just like, it's one of those astonishing things to watch. Where, like, as you're watching it, you're like, there's so many things about this that don't make sense, but yet I see it happening. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it, it's just, uh, it, it's a lot of the interesting kinds of references like that uh they describe oh oh cody mckenzie of course has his uh top knot going strong in this fight of course he does at least at the beginning uh which is described as uh a homeless samurai haircut um the next fight they covered was their bad bad fight was elsie davis versus davidas taro Savicius. I guess is his name. It's an old WEC fight. I believe WEC 47. Um, it was one that Phil McKenzie recommended. Uh, and it was... Uh, it wasn't that bad of a fight. I think at the end they even decided it was more of a good bad fight than a bad bad fight. Um, but mostly just because of all the dick shots. Like it started off with a lot of clinches and then there was so many dick shots. 
Um, Were a lot of points taken? Oh, no, zero points taken. Okay. The ref only warned about dick shots one time, I think, despite there being, like, a good maybe 10 or 12 dick shots in this fight, uh, which was kind of fucking amazing. Um, let's see. They said it's hilarious that DeVita looks like a Roman who Bill and Ted brought back to the future and put in a cage. Uh, and then the dick punching starts in the fight. Uh, they're convinced the ref is a eunuch. Oh, my. He just enjoys dick trauma so much, and he's also large and bald. Oh. <laughs> and so they're just like, like uh, one of the best characters for those who watch Game of Thrones, Varys. Yes, the exactly. The eunuch who is bald and smart. Yeah, so that's, and they were uh, yeah. starting to talk about how they're convinced he's a eunuch. Um, Did they mention it, actually? Like, the Game of Thrones reference? I want to be No, they didn't mention Game of Thrones specifically, but it was everything but that. Yeah. Uh, and then they discuss Rome's love of, uh, or the Roman, hi- the, the history of Rome and how they have a, a deep knowledge of dick punching. Because, uh, of course, the guy who's landing on the dick punches is Roman, and so, and their buddy. Wait, Roman, wait, his name is Roman, or he can certainly He's just from Rome. Oh, he's Roman, isn't it? I thought it was like, yeah. like, he just, like, I am... No, no his name is, like, like David... Well, here, well, we'll look at his name and say it for me, since you know more Italian and Roman shit than I do. Uh, Actually, this is more Latin, more than anything. Uh, Davidius Tato Savicius. Yeah. Or some shit like that. E- oh, shit. Exactly. So, that dude, uh, that dude... Ha- so, uh, Pat Wyman, of course, does the Fall of Rome podcast, who's one of the hosts of uh, Heavy Hands. So yeah. it just led to a lot of jokes about how they sh- uh, someone should start a parody podcast of Fall of Rome and just make it all about all the losses this dude has had. Oh, man. Uh, it, was, it was a real fucking goofy episode. Uh, and then, uh, oh, Davidius goes for the world's worst rubber guard. Um, it was awful. Like, he, it looked like, the, I believe they described it as, it looks like he's trying to put himself in a toehold. Oh, he's so unflexible, and he's going for a rubber guard. It's awful. Uh, and then they did Overeem and Verdum 2, which was just basically Verdum pulling guard the entire time, and Overeem refusing to go into his guard and standing up and waving Overeem oh, up. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm really telling me about that. Or waving, waving Verdum up. Uh... Uh, at one point, they said it as they, they described it as they're just having sex now, because <laughs> it was just over him laying on Verdum in the most awkward way, uh, and they described it as essentially a fight between bullies since they're so fucking known for being dicks. Uh, and they talk a lot about all of the awesome stories of Verdum and Overeem fucking people up. Like, uh, how yeah. Overeem is just completely willing to leg kick women reporters if they ask him for a leg kick and he does not hold back. And his name some, is Edmund? Oh, no, there was a young girl that like, recently, there's a video that came out that was like, there's a, like, maybe she's not 16, she's like 12, maybe? Oh, shit. 14. She's like, leg so he kicked kicked me. a child? Oh, he, he punted a child in the leg. <laughs> it's fucking... She d- looked like she was gonna die. It was brutal. Uh, it was hilarious, but brutal. She, I she wanted see, I have to. to see that, because it sounds like she asked for it, and that's hilarious. Yeah, we will actually... Uh, we, we will... Uh, we should probably do that here. Go ahead and... Uh, why don't you get into your skip for the week? And I will pull that up. But yeah, I absolutely recommend people check out um, MMA Depressed Us because it's very good. Also, they do video on YouTube. And if, if I didn't mention, they sync it up with a fight pass and all to that. To be fair, my skip it for the week is one that I didn't even list to barely half of. Uh, it was this week's co main event. I know they went into pretty decent detail. I just thought they kind of meandered a bit in the beginning. They were a little all over the yeah. place. A lot of kid talk. Like most of my notes were just like segments that caught my ear like could tim boach beat michael bisbing right now and that kind of got me thinking hmm i mean i'd probably have my money on bisbing just because of his stand-up yeah his down defense but I it's not a bad question it's not a bad question it's a really good one uh, oh i think it was chad dundas said justine kish for all those miss it when boom boom when being stra- <laughs> strangled by felice herrig this doesn't doom Kish, though, because she was currently undefeated before the fight. Yeah. Uh, for those who missed it, she took a fat shit 
when she was being strangled with the body uh, truck. Not that fat, evidently, since you and I both didn't notice until we I was really it drunk out. when I was watching that, and I didn't even notice until I watched the highlight. And I was so, like, oh no, she took a shit. I actually watched this fight two different times, and I didn't notice either time. I was very, very, very drunk Probably cut away time. immediately. Uh, well, the, so the first time I was absolutely plastered, because I came back, that was the day I came back from the fair. Yeah. And I ate, like, maybe a good 250 milligrams in edibles and drank Did you had a good three, old bar? Drank like a good four or five uh, shots and drinks and a beer or two. Yeah, that'll do it. So yeah. Plus by that, a beer or two? Jesus. No, actually by that point I had five beers. Oh, great. Uh, well, I started at like two. Oh, well. Uh, mostly with the edibles. You're probably there too. The like- fair was great, you guys. Is my point. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I watched it again. And I didn't notice the second time either. They probably cut away. We probably did. No, no, I torrented it. So, oh, I shouldn't have said that. I found it online. So uh, it. I mean, it was just the... I just did it, didn't Did notice. it actually cut away or no? Or we just missed it each time? I just didn't... I don't think I noticed. I think they cut away. Well, no, I don't think it did because later Johnny Hendrix, I heard, gets knocked out and falls in it. Oh, yeah. I think someone on Reddit mentioned yeah. that. Oh, man, that's brutal. Yeah. That's just his career right there. I mean... Falling on some doo-doo. Yeah, that's rough. Um, uh, so, yeah. That any, was a weird anyways, set. Anyway, so then they said... Uh, they talked to a bell tour briefly from when I even listened... I remember they mentioned they couldn't pronounce Brent Premise's name, so they just called him no Brent. No one does They it. just called it Brent Prometheus, which is fine by me. That's fine. If you can't <laughs> pronounce a name, go real weird on it. So Brent Prometheus defeats Michael Chandler due to dead nerves, as they called it, which I think me and you initially thought he, what, broke his ankle or his leg, right? Everyone did, uh, and then later... It was nerves, right? It, it was nerves dead. It's a nerve, yeah, that yeah. runs on the side of the leg, which uh, Joe Warren actually clarified on the Sean Funky and the Baddest Man podcast this week. Because he was in the corner of Scott Jorgensen when that happened to him in the cage. It was, I, don't, I, I, I was screaming this in the theater when we were watching this at Bellator. But no, I think you mentioned that to me, too. Yeah, like, uh, that. there's a Scott Jorgensen fight. It, I think maybe his last fight in the UFC where there's a nerve on, your, on like, the outside of your calf right under your knee where if you hit it, you're, you just can't lift your foot. Uh, you can't lift your toes specifically. So it com- and you like lose all stability. So uh, you basically will just stumble around, and that's exactly if you look at the Scott Jorgensen fight and the uh, Michael Chandler fight. Excuse me, it's almost one to one on the way they're falling and stumbling. Like it's it looked identical to me when I saw it in the theater. So I immediately thought it would be that. Uh, and Joe Warren was in uh, Scott Jorgensen's corner for that fight, so he said that he, that he thought that's probably what it was, and I believe they came out and said specifically he didn't break anything. Yeah, this he's because because um, they're looking to reschedule that soon. Because this isn't one of my highlighted podcasts. I listened to just two people on the MMA Hour, and it was uh, Coker and Chandler. And Chandler on the MMA Hour did say it was my nerve that got completely just shut off. It's like the equivalent, I guess, of having like that dead arm when you sleep on it and you can't feel anything in your arm. Yeah. So like, Oh, you mean every night for me because my shoulders yeah. are garbage? So basically he was just saying it's like his mind was like, yes, I could step on my leg. I think he said there was no pain. It was just like he just could stand on it. Like, yeah. That was it. But that with the... No pain isn't a good sign, yeah, though. Yeah. Because, like... Uh, Can it lead to, like, no... temporary paralysis, too, in a way? Oh, That's a big well, fucking problem. You could definitely lose... Or you could lose your You leg. could have issues, yeah. Because yeah. if there's no pain, you also... There's no feeling. So that means you don't know how you're stepping and walking, so... Yeah, so the motor skills... Like I mean, off. there's parts where you yeah. see... I heard people talk about how they saw his toes touch his heel at certain points during that fight. Ugh. Like, horrible shit like that. What where the like, fuck? Well, and I broke my leg really bad. I Anderson silva myself because uh, I was skating. Uh, I actually got Anderson silva th- that same surgery where I have a titanium rod down the center of my bone on my left leg. I have a big old, the big old scar on my no, knee yeah. and everything. Uh, it was because I was, I was skating down a hill, turned a corner, didn't see the person, and my leg went under the wheel. Uh, and they, like, I, I had a cast, it slipped, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, I got the surgery. I was, like, one of the first people. Uh, or not one of the first, but, like, it was still early. It was before Anderson the recent Silva people. got it. Yeah. yeah. I think it was only invented a couple years before I got it. Because I think it was made, like, 
2012 and I got it in like 2014 or something like that. Um, but it, it, the, when I broke my leg, I uh, straight up stood on it. I Anderson Silva myself. I then stood up on my leg. Yeah, because of adrenaline and, it, and shit. Well, right. And it, it just straight TP'd on me, like, in the middle. Like, I put pressure and it just went straight 90 degrees or 45 degrees sideways. And I fell down. But, like, I didn't, it didn't hurt. Like, no, because there's no feeling. Yeah, but that's not but good. That's not good. That's yeah. probably worse. <laughs> it's yeah. So like, it's it's good that they stopped that when they did. It's it, you can't have somebody wa- like wobbling around like it's you can't intelligently defend yourself if you can't stand on two feet. That's and you have to always be able to intelligently defend yourself. So yeah, it's a pretty clear ruling as far as I'm concerned. Yep. And, um, let's see, where was I? What is your listen to for the week? I thought we were doing Skip. Or is it Skip now? Am I way off? Yeah, because you, you just did your, uh... Uh... You I did catch this, which is Chael. I guess I just did Skip. What the fuck am I talking about? I just did Skip. Yeah, Comain. Sorry. Comain, exactly. Yeah, because we were talking about, um... I mentioned something on, um... In the May Hour with Michael Chandler, yeah. This right. was after I talked about Johnny Hendricks, and we were just blasting on him, and then the taking a doo doo and all that. Yeah. So. Yep. Okay. So also, well, before I get to my skip, why sure. don't we why don't we watch Overeem kick this little girl in the uh, yeah, in, let's in the this. leg? Uh, you're gonna be very upset when you realize how old she is. You think she looks terrible? How old do you think this girl is? Kid looks like she's like 11, 10 or eleven. Yeah. Now watch. Watch this kick. It's not as bad as you think it would be, but it's still too bad. Uh, nope, that's not the one. That's it. <laughs> that's oh, really oh fucking hard. Oh my god. <laughs> that's really hard <laughs> to kid that that's young. Bad. It's pretty fucked up. Uh, my skip for the week is actually uh, I mine is a half skip. I recommend skipping the first half of the fighter, or not the fighter, the kid, the Big Brown Breakdown episode 31. Uh, the first half, Brendan Schaub talks so much about Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather and about how if Betting you're... Betting the hundred grand. Yep. And if you're picking, if you're, if you're saying there's zero percent about, there's zero percent chance that Floyd wins, then you I mean, Connor, know yeah, nothing yeah. about boxing, you know nothing about MMA... You know nothing about sports. Stop listening to me now. Uh, yeah, it was it was fucking brutal. It, it was a lot of that, um, and That's it was it was kind of rough. A, a lot of talk about Bellator stuff uh, since he worked that card. Right, his um, experience on like the post fights and all that. Right. Well, yeah, and he, yeah, and, like being in the building. He actually told a cool story. Actually, I'll get to that in a second. But yeah, it, it, the first half I would say skip. Second half is actually pretty good. Uh, at one point, he talks about how. Because uh, Fox released a statement this week saying, like, we're no longer getting into content for with other people. We're only doing content with people that work with us. So, like, Skip ba- or, or not Skip Bayless, uh, who was it? Um, well, Skip Bayless is a piece of shit who works for Fox. Yeah, but it wasn't Skip, though. It was, uh... Who, who's the other guy? Shannon Sharp? Yep, who's Shannon Sharp. Butterman? They're like, yeah, the oh, Wait, that's who he is. Is Shannon Sharp the black dude? Yes. Okay. We thought that did scare you when I was there when he said all yeah. the time. So yeah. So Shannon, they're like, sh- yeah. we want to work with people like Shannon Sharp going forward, not people like Fighter and the Kid, who oh, fuck. who use our brand to pump up their per- their uh, popularity. We want to work with people who we own in all forms of media. Oh. Like Shannon Sharp. Oh. They yeah, said the he, phrase, yeah, yeah. we own Shannon Sharp in all forms of media. That sounds like slavery. That is her. That's what Brendan started losing his shit okay, about. Okay, and then do you remember that clip I played for you about a year ago when... Uh, uh, when Shannon Sharp and Skipper List lost her shitty show, whatever it's called, he's like, uh, you know how you see the MMA, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, remember that? Brazilian, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, so yeah, there's so many upsetting things. But yeah, they straight up said, we don't want to work with people like Fighter and the Kid who made their brand off of our company. Oh, and uh, Brendan Shop went off. He fucking shit on this dude because it was the head of Fox who said that shit, mm. uh, and the head of Fox is also the guy who Brendan uh, told everyone was only able to keep his previous job for a week 
He also was the guy who told Br- Brendan Schaub, you have a black belt in the cage, I have a black belt in TV. Oh, God. Uh, let's see. He shits all over the guy. He just keeps calling him old and white and uninformed. Uh, it's the fucking the best. He explains why they left Fighter and the Kid and how they were paid. They were paid how many... So, you saw how long Fighter and the Kid was on Fox, right? And how much content they did for that for that was place? Like barely anything? Or were they always spo- sponsored by Fox? And I just didn't know that when they had their content. Yeah, well, remember they were Fighter and the Kid forever. Like, they were I know like, that, they had but Fox when, Sports when, logo. I don't for, like, the the first, like, I had no idea forever. about the Fox logistics of, of it. I so, do you... Well, how, like... Do, like, if I were to guess, how long were they with Fox? No, no. So, like... They were paid zero dollars by Fox. Oh. They only made sponsorship money. Oh. Huh. On the podcast. But they got 100% of the sponsorship money. Okay. But they still probably should right. be paid by Fox well, either way. But Fox, yeah. But Fox didn't know shit about podcasts and didn't realize how much money that was going to be. Because oh, it's Brandon Shaw and yeah. Brian Cowan and their friends with <laughs> Rogan. Uh, they then, Fox, <clears throat> with, the reason why they left Fox is because Fox came to them and was like, they kind of finally went Yeah, up. we're going to need half yeah. the yeah, sponsorship and money. Up, yeah. And Brennan Shop's like, no, go fuck yourself. Oh, half your, well, half yeah. the articles on your website have my name on them because of the shit I'm saying. Absolutely not. We're paying you 0% of the sponsorship money. And as a matter of fact, we should probably be getting paid for. And they're like, that's why they left Fox. Uh, they then later fired Evan the Beard, I heard, who was the uh, producer for that show. Um, and it was just interesting hearing, and Shab just kept shitting on this dude over and over, like talking about you know it's nothing about MMA and how they're a dying fucking dinosaur company and how they're not gonna last. Uh, the second half of the show is great, um, and then Mitrione on to talk about his win. Uh, Mitrione is like currently in Lafayette, Louisiana, in his hometown, and he's getting ready to go. Of course he is. Yeah, he's going getting ready to go travel to a bunch of. Uh, goofy places like uh, fucking I think he's going to Chicago and a couple other places to see like the Grateful Dead and like a couple fucking like, other bands Just fucking why not yeah and Brendan Schaub tells a story about how in the back he went up to Mitrione and he's like fucking jumping on him and wrestling him around he's like you fucking beat up Fedor man you beat up <laughs> Fedor actually he even jokes he's like I mean I beat you up so that means I kind of beat up Fedor too but well, you beat up Fedor that's funny and uh and Mitrion is like fucking like barely with it but Shaw's being really loud and obnoxious Shaw leaves the room walks two steps to the right and realizes Fedor's entire team and Fedor's on the other side of the curtain <laughs> and he's like oh I got the coldest Russian stare and he told Mitri on the story which he thought was hilarious I thought it was just uh, oh, the second half of the episode is absolutely great but the first half where he talks about Connor Floyd and how people don't know boxing man because Connor's gonna do something that boxing hasn't seen so somehow that means they don't sure. know boxing he, what is he gonna fucking back sidekick fucking Floyd I, he's just getting really upsetting about that one. Like, I agree with him in that you can't say Connor has a zero percent chance. Yeah, of course he's a chance. But it's but like it's very low. And I agree with him that <clears throat> Connor has a better chance in it, in boxing than Floyd has in MMA. Well, of course. Like Floyd would last like thirty seconds in MMA, uh, just because he doesn't know how to stop takedown. Yeah, that's it. Uh, or choke, or not get choked the fuck out. But uh, it. It's or upsetting. To stop the face. Yeah, it's upsetting how hard Brendan has been going with that shit, um, and he just keeps doubling down, and it's getting real brutal. Uh, so why don't we get to your can't miss episode for the week? My can't miss of the week was the fuck is it? Heavy Hands one sixty five. Great episode. I like this. Um, not gonna lie, I did kind of fast forward to the halfway point where they immediately start talking about Romero versus uh, Bobby Knuckles. Uh, they said, "You well, Romero." Is- I mean, that's that was pretty early on. That probably wasn't even the halfway. It point. wasn't halfway. That was my first. Uh, they said Romero is prob is probably the most explosive middleweight as far as ending the fight in an instant. Well, and they talk about how much Pat loves Romero and Bobby Knuckles. Like yeah. he has such a crush on Romero and Bobby Knuckles. It's hilarious. To be fair, though, besides Habib versus Tony, it's probably the best all around like just fight style matchup too. Yeah. Like it's yeah. so interesting. Yeah, because they're so it's such a style. Clash. That 
So they're talking about that. They said, did we all collectively overrate Chris Weidman as an athlete? Not as a fighter, but as far as just his technical prowess and how he matches up stylistically. It's possible. It's possible. I still think Weidman has some stuff left in him. You know what I mean? He's still, he's still got the talent, I think. Like, he's still pretty fucking good. Well, and when you look at who he's lost to, like, they're all monsters. Yeah, they're all, mur- they're all murders, yeah. It's like the uh, very elite of the elite. I would like his chances if he did ever rematch Gegard because, I mean, sure, I, yes, I do think Gegard was winning. That's why the Wyden was in it, though, with the clinches, too. And it depends he, on what he Gegard like, and what Chris He got, like, a takedown up. on him, too. And he yeah. Was, so, that would be a full rematch I would love to see. But then again, Chris Weidman is going to have his hands full against Kelvin Gaslam. Holy fuck. That's coming up at the end of July, too, I believe. Or yep. the of July. Um, they said uh, Robert Whitaker's biggest strength is he understands space really well. And his youth and athleticism is what will win him this fight. I believe they both said they think Robert Whitaker is going to come out with this win. I know me and you have both said, even before this fight's going to happen... Which is, holy shit, starting next week. Wow. Uh, oh, it's next week? Yeah. Remember, it's the 8th? It's act- Oh, right, because there's two cards next yeah. week. Yeah, which we'll discuss ah. in our next segment. Either way, uh, spoiler alert for people who are listening now. You did not hear what we just said. Anyways, um, after that, they, they there's been a running joke for a while in Heavy Hands that uh, Justin Gaethje doesn't have a Wikipedia page. Oh, true. But before we get to that, I have oh, yes. to bring up, there was an amazing fucking joke about how uh, Ro- Yoel Romero has so much patience that he's actually an immortal from the 17th century, and he smoked from the cigarillo of youth. Uh, That's pretty great. Yeah, because he sounds like he's 90, but he looks like he's 12. I love you, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a fucking one it, of those. Him and uh, him and Stipe. Is one of those Connor Rebus jokes that is so specific and weird yeah. that I fucking love I'd it. I'd say him and Stipe are like smoke brothers in the sense that they've been smoking since birth. Yeah, they also talked about how fucking good uh, Yoel is at seeing tendencies and capitalizing on them. Yeah, like how about how good he is at recognizing patterns and seeing seeing when to like when to jump on it. Um, and they talked about their constant fear of UL Romero fl- uh, flying kneeing them. Yeah. Like uh, like Connor's scared he, he's just going to be walking to the bathroom one night and UL is going to pop out. And just a wild UL Romero him, yeah. flying knee appears. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I thought it, it was all very Connor Rebush jokes and I, I was a big, big fan. Yeah. Um,. Anyways, they talked about Gaethje finally has a Wikipedia page, which is great. He should. That's he's time. A, he's on a fucking he's network killing, television. Yeah. He's been killing people for years. Um, what I liked is they said his style is he's a maniac who doesn't mind getting hit and loves the pressure from the fights that you showed me a couple weeks ago. Dude. From when I looked even even past that, he's fighting against Luis Firmino, uh, yeah, not Palomino, the other Luis guy, and then that one guy, Brian Foster. He gets he into fucking, wild He scraps. fucking TKO Brian Foster, just that low leg kick of death, man. And they were talking about... People don't realize how good uh, his leg kicks They are. said that's one of his best counters to just like a straight right, straight left, because... Michael Johnson has that great hand speed, but what's they said Michael Johnson leaves himself open too, especially when he leans forward. What's Justin Gaethje gonna do? Someone who could take punishment, he might use that fucking leg kick. Well, and that low kick. Really. Michael Johnson doesn't do well when it gets into like fucking wild, like uh, emotional Rawls. shit. Yeah, like and the pressure Gaethje, fighting. And Gaethje has them in. clearly made him emotional this week. Yeah. Yeah, they said what's a little different, though, is he gets hit less when he's being wild. Instead of when he's technical, he actually gets hit more. So that's interesting. True. Uh, can Michael Johnson stick to his game plan or would be sucked into his opponent's trap? They said Johnson has to keep the fight technical and not allow Gaethje to feel comfortable at all during any part of the fight. The biggest hurdle for Justin Gaethje will be Johnson's speed and athleticism. However, can Johnson deal with Gaethje's early pressure like we just mentioned? Uh, they both agree that cardio will not be an issue for either fighter. I agree with that. They both lean towards Johnson, but wouldn't be surprised if Gaethje takes it. So it seems like it's kind of a toss-up for them. I, mean, I, I know get, we'll go into more in I'm, depth, probably. I'm feeling very similarly. Like, Same uh, with me. I, I really like both these guys, and I think this is a very interesting style matchup where it just it depends on what version of both guys shows up. Yeah. And it, it, the, the variable here is, what does Gaethje's chin look like in the UFC? Yeah. Because Gaethje's gets clipped in every fight. Oh, yeah. It always happens. But yep. what does it look like against high, high-level competition? Yeah. So that'll be interesting. I know. And then lastly, when they're talking about pressure fighting and Johnson, that being his main weakness, there was a clip of a Dutch kickboxer, Van... 
horrors of then I can't remember. I think he was a former Glory champ or current Glory champ. Absolutely baiting Johnson up into a brawl and lighting him the fuck up. Apparently, it was a clip that he put on his Instagram. Yeah, it was it, Colin or something like that. Von, yeah, that was the name. Uh, I think I have. That so right. they were giving Gaethje a big benefit of the doubt, saying he should be able if he gets him into that whirlpool kind of effect and brawls him up. Uh, that's going to be bad news for Johnson, and I know we'll get into it a little more later. Gaethje's one of those like guys that you just can't under. He has this. He always has that like weird Connor factor, where like he'll get hit, but he's going to throw bombs the entire time. So like, yeah, we'll see. Like it's one, of, but like he's not evasive or te- or like uses space like Connor does. But he just has that touch of death, like. That dude hits people in a way that, like, I, I've seen people do, like, half backflips and, like, spin around because of how hard. Here's that Anthony Johnson I, style. I power. feel like his power will translate over just fine in the UFC, but, like, you were telling, you were just saying earlier, just chin. how will his chin transform yeah. with other power? Because he always gets clipped. Uh, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. I know he was getting tagged crazy in that Palomino fight, so I'm Every sure fight. he'll, I'm sure he'll be, like, just because he's alive and never been knocked out, I'm sure he'll be, he'll be okay. Initially, you know, like he'll he'll probably be able to take some shots, of course. Oh, he'll take some shots, but it, when it turns into a crazy brawl, like, yeah. Johnson is is good at reading distance, as seen in that fucking uh, even in Nate Diaz fight, he did a pretty good job at tagging Nate. Well, from and distance. especially in the Poirier fight, when yeah. it was super emotional. He did great in that fight. Oh yeah. Um, so I'll just end that note from theirs. Uh, I just I read uh, yesterday. Jack Slack wrote a very in depth preview of Johnson versus Gaethje. Ooh, it's a, interesting. It's a great read. I highly recommend it. He talks about uh, every aspect of the fight, how each fighter could win. He can see, you know, he he doesn't like to give a prediction. So I think he said it's a toss up too. So yeah, I mean it's so, a it's a close fight. I think on everybody's cards, and and the only people who think it's gonna be a blowout against Gaethje are people who've not seen that dude fight. Yeah, they're like, hey, where else is it fighting? Like, well, C-League. Oh, you're coming over C-League. from fucking uh, the yeah. Ali Abdulaziz League and say, uh, uh, let's see. So my pick for can't miss for the week is one hundred percent Joe Rogan Experience episode nine eighty one with Josh Barnett. Holy fuck, Josh Barnett was on fire in this episode. They're, they talk about so much shit. Yeah. Most of it is not even MMA related. Yeah, from the 20 minutes I listened to, it was great. Yeah. Very proud of it. They, they're like, I mean, they talk a ton about... Uh, I love that they started out talking about cults immediately and how crazy downtown LA or, uh, is. Skid Row, right? Yeah. LA? Yeah. A lot of Skid Row talk. They talk about how fucking dumb flops are in soccer, which is amazing, because uh, they do a whole breakdown of and soccer flops. I remember videos. I was talking this about you before, Bruce, before we watched The Ultimate Fighter, how they both agreed that if somehow the NFL were to fold, which that isn't actually out of the question, considering where the NFL is going, and they all fucking played rugby... Josh Burnett was like, hands down, all the top NFL players would fucking destroy all rugby players. For any rugby fans who are shaking your heads right now, go ahead and start nodding because you know it's true. Yeah. The NFL players are like the best athletes in the world, arguably, and I think they would totally dominate. They're close. They're definitely the most roided up, uh, and yes. that is an advantage. Shouts out to Pride. Um, yeah, I, I mean, how's your 40 time rugby players? That's all I have to say about that In one. Exactly. Yeah, no, no one's running a 4 no one's two, No one's no. running a 10 40. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking rugby yeah. players are not, not explosive. A five. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they're yeah. grinders. They're all Diego Sanchez's, but, uh, yeah. Um, let's see. They also talk a lot about all of Josh's nerdy, uh, hobbies. Talk, they m- briefly mention fucking D and D. They mention <laughs> magic. It's they mention because of course Josh, if you guys don't know, is a humongous magic nerd. He plays MTG like a motherfucker. Like he has decks on decks. <laughs> uh, and is probably fucking, knowing him since that shit came oh, out. Oh no, he literally goes, "Yo, I tapped that man." <laughs> like making fucking. Wait, when, when did that jokes. game come out? I have no idea. I think I remember seeing that when I was in elementary school. I don't know about you. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It was probably, like, yeah, elementary mental for me. Yeah. Uh, but I'm a little bit older than you, so. Yeah. Um, let's see. They talk about drunk people starting shit with Josh and whether it ever happens. Which oh, psychopaths, right? It doesn't happen a lot. Uh, but the, he talks about it a couple times it does and how he handles it. Uh, they watch the hilarious, uh, the hilariously unhilarious old clip of Sean Connery talking about hitting women. <laughs> 
where he's like, sometimes you just need to give him a little smack. <laughs> it's like, well, sometimes they have to have the last word, and you let them have the last word, but that's not enough. They need another last word. Who's that? Here's me career for hit them in the face. Yeah, you give, you give them a little smack. Oh, uh, it man. was fucking awful and hilarious all at the same time. And then that leads into Barnett telling a bunch of stories about his crazy exes. Like ones who hit him in the face. Uh, also tells a story of his uh, crazy ex who lost to Shayna Baszler and is a Bellator fighter. That's all I'm going to say on that. Uh, you can do that math and definitely figure out who she is uh, she's evidently a huge Marxist and SJW as well don't say that name oh, out loud uh, she like, literally was reading like Marxist <laughs> literature and shit like like the, the, the classic Marxist reading so she would have named their kid if they had Carl uh, with a K Yes. Uh, yeah. The only Carl. Yeah, of course. Uh, and let's see. They had an interesting discussion off that off about fighter pay and uh, what's like in uh, especially in regards to WMMA and like what's fair and what's not. Because uh, his ex was like all it was saying shit like was, oh how is this like a comparison as far as like the workforce in general and applying it to like MMA. Well, his ex would always bring it up like, like oh it's, it's fucked up that I get paid so and so in fucking. I believe it was like Mark Hunt or Pat Barry or somebody was getting paid a lot. It was oh, like, and Mark Hunt gets they like get paid grand. that. Yeah. It was like, I, don't know. I mean, people. There's like 300 people yeah, paying to ask, watch like, you fight. Ask there's other, like ask, 300. It's all about people market, market, Mark Hunt, marketability yeah. and name brand. Ask Ronda Rousey. Ask Paige Van Zandt. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, ask Chris Cyborg. Yeah, it was just it was interesting that that uh, it got brought up. Uh, let's see. They talk a bit about Randy and uh, Randy Couture versus James Tony, which is hilarious. Because like, uh, the Connor stuff comes up, of course. So oh, they that bring was a that funny up. fight. I remember watching that a year ago. That was great. Fucking ridiculous. Uh, yeah, that Randy Couture James Tony fight where he just gets just single leg immediately. Yeah. That low ankle pick. Um, let's see. Josh talks about his love of philosophy and lectures, and uh, they have a, a big discussion on Marxism and how it doesn't work. Uh, I noted that I fucking forgot how brilliant Josh Barnett is and that dude absolutely needs a podcast, uh, which comes up again later in the episode when I remember he used to have a fucking podcast. Oh, was this the one with Sean Wheelock or no? No, Josh Barnett used to have a podcast on what channel? Fox Sports. Oh, Jesus. Uh, and they were awful to him and he also okay. happened to tell a story well, about how Fox Sports is a piece of shit. Um, and if the you're only thing that ever came well, they from, own Shannon Sharp in all forms of media. Yeah. The only thing I like about Fox is that they own FX, which produces great original. Content. They don't just own FX; they own black people as well. But I'm saying the only thing positive about Fox is that they produce FX, which has a lot of good fucking shows. Uh, yeah. That's it. That's like literally that's, that's the about, only yeah, good about thing it. about Fox. Um, oh yeah, I'll just say my favorite quote from the 20 minutes I listened to. If I could find it... Oh, yeah. Josh Barnett means says, Hey, come to L.A. You might get fucked, or you might not. Sounds that's about L- right. That's L.A. Yeah, sounds about right. Oh, um, they, oh, they also talked a bit about... Uh, Josh starts going deep on cars with Rogan. And they talk about Gabriel oh, Iglesias' his, his smoking the bandit manual, Camaro. His, his six-speed manual, like, uh, yeah, Camaro. That yeah. He drives in well, LA. And Gabriel has a, uh, Gabriel Iglesias just bought a smoking the bandit converted, like, converted Camaro. Oh, shit. Like, they converted one of the new Camaros in to look like the smoking the bandit car. I can see it looking pretty badass. It's pretty tight. If you, you can find it on YouTube. Uh, let's see. He calls people like his ex-champagne socialists, which I thought was the fucking greatest phrase of all time for all those fucking super liberal dicks who are like oh really there should be no actual difference in pay it should be difference in quality of experience everyone should make the same amount of money like oh well the big discrepancy between there is whoever the boss is regardless of of you know gender is gonna always dictate how pay is too usually or yeah. the head of like that company you know what I mean like well they talked about uh, at one point I believe they even said like um, his ex at one point said uh, every company should be required to be a uh, co-op which is 
so fucking fascist that you can't own your own company in this country. You have to have other people that are can buy it. It's yeah. like it's so fucked up as an idea. Like, oh no, because that's like this. That means have, you do all the you work. Give, I yeah. sit on my ass and just drink Make all day. And like, all right, Chris, thanks. Have a day. You have. You know, just like fucking taking all. Speaking like that. of which, shouts out to, uh, shouts out to, uh, oh, God damn it, Julian Spirits, which uh, I'm a future employee of. Yep, shouts out to, uh, I'll just say my pops. Yeah, that's right. We're officially sponsored by Julian Spirits. Go check out their website that doesn't exist yet. Um, let's see. They talk about working with Travis Brown. Uh, Rogan talks about how there's... Oh, Rogan says there's going to be a UFC in Detroit. Ooh, that's the one that uh, Kevin Motown Phenom Lee wants to fight Habib at. I bet. Because uh, Rogan like said, like, oh, yeah, I've been hearing there's going to be a UFC in Detroit. And you know what? I, I think uh, if the money's good, Habib will take that fight. Oh, yeah, and I think he wins that fight, too. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately for uh, Kevin for Lee. Lee. yeah. But Kevin, dude, Kevin Lee's been surprising me lately. Yeah. That dude's tough as shit. He's a very shit. young, sharp, and talent. Um, let's see. Oh, they talk a bunch about jo- John Peretti and Battlecade. Uh, they start going on, on like a deep dive on old school MMA, bring up a bunch of guys, uh, like the dudes they brought over, like uh, Maurice Smith. Talk about Krokop's leg kicks. And how, uh, Josh Barnett actually says Krokop's leg kicks were worse than Pedro Hizzo's. Which, oh, for shit. the longest time, Rogan's been saying Pedro Hizo has the nastiest leg kicks ever. But Josh was like, dude, Miracles are way worse. Uh, oh, Josh says Fox dropped the ball on his podcast. And they fucked up uh, Hinato Orange bit. Oh. Where they put out audio where Hinato was not in character. It was just being <laughs> the actual actor. And they were like talking about what they're gonna discuss on the show, and then they, and then they start the show. Fox oh. put out the pre fucking lewd where he, it ruins everything yeah. if you do that. Like it just shows how He's little saying, respect. All right, well, when are they gonna talk about this? Yeah, zero respect from Fox, as uh, Hinata would say. Uh, I, I wrote in all caps: "Fuck Fox." They're one hundred percent the reason he has no podcast anymore. Uh, and Rogan explains how networks are bullshit, especially Fox. Uh, and he explains to Josh how he needs to start up his own podcast again. Because uh, Josh used to have one. Uh, they also talk about how uh, Josh could was not allowed to have historians on the show who know about Nazis because they're Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Fox, to me, is an acronym for, like, fantastic, outstanding xenophobes. Yeah. Well, especially when the fucking... The or, head of Fox is saying, Oh, we own Shannon Sharp in all forms of media. Yeah. <laughs> Horrific. Uh, and then, Murdoch, you son of a bitch. Yeah. And they also mentioned briefly the uh, USADA failure jo- Josh had. And how he's still, to this day, getting supplements tested and trying Ooh, to get him rolling. Yeah. Which is crazy. Uh, and it sounds like he's gotten shit tested and pro- proven positive. But they're still like fighting him on it. Like huh. he said, the he, he sent them supplements. Is it a commission they issue? said it was tested positive for the same shit, and he's still fighting with Usada about it, um, yeah. which is weird. I think it's because it's probably his second failure. Maybe he's just making excuses. I get it though. Possible, uh, but it was a great fucking episode. I recommend people check it out. It's. It's absolutely incredible, and I really enjoyed it. Um, oh, yeah. And Josh Burnett is... If you guys have not heard Josh Burnett talking on any kind of long form, the dude is extremely brilliant um, and very articulate. Like, uh, you wouldn't think it from, like, all his love of metal and his weird fucking uh, goofy oh, attitude of, towards sure things. Was, yeah. yeah. But he's a very bright dude. Who's very, like Chris, you'll bag me up on this, right? Like super sharp and yeah. really oh, like yeah. well read. And he's ready to talk about just about points. anything if you mention it or if he if he knows yeah. some sort of a sub thought. Like on he's the a idea. big fan of philosophy and like he's just a very interesting dude with a lot of life. I can tell so. he reads a lot of books, which I need to start Shit doing load. again. Yeah, me yeah, too. I never read books. Shouts out to Audible. That's how I read books. Um, because. 
it's like the book of podcasts. Well, you just uh, have someone read to you. Yeah, especially normally it's the author and they tell way better stories. Shouts out to Bert, Bert Kreischer's uh, Audible uh, <laughs> recording. See, I kind of feel like all the kids who are just now reading Harry Potter, if they read it in J.K. Rowling's voice, it's probably ten times better because she actually wrote that shit. No, probably. And she has some weird fanciful British voice, probably. Yeah. Um, let's Harry see. Potter. Yeah. Is there any other uh, shows you want to bring up? Uh, no, that was it for me, man. I didn't really have anything else of uh, I, I know I listened to Unfiltered. Um, Michael Johnson was on there. Yeah, that oh, was oh, embarrassing. Actually, that was wait. almost my skip for this week. Actually, yes, I will mention that was embarrassing because uh, fucking Matt Sarah would not let the go let that go that he fucked up one fight in, in as far as the order. Well, he to be uh, fair, it's an embarrassing one because it was a bad yeah, meeting that yeah. Michael Johnson took from. Could I, be. This is the thing. I will mention. Submission Radio, Michael John, who's on. This was entertaining because he was just talking about... Uh, I didn't get a chance to check that out. Basically, what I was intrigued by is he talked about how Henry Hoof opened up his new combat club MMA after he split from Black Zillions. Michael was saying the rest of the Black Zillions, I think it was like Rashad and, well, Anthony's retired, but a bunch of those other guys went separate ways and... Uh, Michael Johnson decided to say, fuck it, I'm sticking with Henry. I think that's the good choice. A lot of guys did. And uh, it feels like the old. He said I stuck with Henry and Greg Jones. He said currently he is just with this combat club MMA. That's just his team with Henry Hoof. Uh, and a couple of, I think Kamar Usman is still there too with yeah. them. A lot of the monsters from Black Zillions went yeah. there. So smart move on the, his part. He said he's very disappointed. He wasn't able to fight Ferguson at 209. He was extremely close to fighting him. He said the deal was he would have had to have cut 13 pounds in six hours, which would have been probably almost impossible to do, but he was, wow. he's, said he was willing to do it because he wanted to fight Tony <laughs> But they that said badly. they wanted to put that off. Like Tony didn't they, said, they said Tony said it was because of a money issue, which I could see why. You have to give more... If you gotta do that to him, and he, uh, they didn't do it. Michael Johnson saying nobody in the division wants to fight right now because they're busy playing the waiting game, aka Connor fighting Pretty much. Floyd. He says hat shouts out, hats off, congratulations, Connor for signing to fight with Mayweather. But the, the the moment you would sign that dotted line, you vacated your belt, in my opinion. Yeah, I buy uh, that. He says he hopes to see Connor return by December because he loves watching Connor fight. Thinks he's great for the sport, helps the division grow. I agree because please fight when you're that talented. How about fight. if you're the champ, just fight. Yeah, and if you're the champ. There's a reason you're a champ. Fucking fight. Uh, someone, uh, oh, the I can't remember the guy's name's Casper, and the other guy's Matt from Submission. They said they mentioned Gaethje stated in the MMA Hour. I think Gaethje was on this week. I probably should listen to that. I'll probably go back. He expects to be knocked out within the next ten fights because of his fighting style. Michael Don said, be careful what you wish for, of course. I mean, against anyone, really. I mean, of course, you're just going to sure. hype yourself up. Uh, but he says obviously he's not looking past or underestimating Justin. No shit. So he kind of backtracked to what he said before. I remember from that kickoff summer event, he's like, "Oh, you're from the C leagues." But when he talked to submission, he's like, "No, it doesn't matter. He's a champion in the organization. You still have to be very skilled." He yeah. says he considers Justin, I think, a top ten lightweight in the world. He also so, considers him inbred, evidently. Yes, according to his Instagram post that I saw and I showed you briefly today. Yeah, well, yeah, I saw that on uh, Reddit or something earlier. Yeah. It was, uh, it was, if you say that to Michael Johnson, Justin Gage gets called a giant racist. Of course. But it's fine the other way around. Um, let's see. Some quick notes I had. Knuckle Up had a big, Eugene Robinson, Eugene S. Robinson did a giant two hour Knuckle Up episode where he followed up some more on the Lorenzo Fertitta stuff. Uh, and he was like, anybody who's surprised by this, you heard how Lorenzo was involved in the Connor fucking Floyd negotiations. You shouldn't be. Like, it all huh. kind of adds up that Lorenzo has a piece in the, in WME IMG's take of the UFC. So oh, shit. It, it makes sense for him to want that fight to happen and to step in and make that uh, conversation happen. Uh, and Lorenzo's good at just getting that shit done. Yeah. Like, he's the dude who's known for that, you know? Um, let's see, some other stuff that I listened to. Oh, he also had some good Lost Battalion stuff on, uh, Johnny, BJ, Chael, all those guys. Uh, MMA Beat, they did a giant Connor Floyd talk about how it's being covered by the media. Bunch of, uh, Bellator discussion in the lead up, and, uh, Luke made the same point I made on the UG, uh, last week that, uh, the best card this year was 20, was UFC 211. Yeah, I agree. But the Bellator card is the second best. I like that. Um, Robin Black did a good, uh, Ask Robin Black episode where he, uh, 
is he, he talked about how he's going to be doing a big Connor Floyd talk soon. Uh, he does a terrible Dewey Cooper impression that he oh, thinks great. is good a couple times, so it's real goofy uh, and campy as fuck. Uh, they have some discussion about how uh, about how you watch fights without commentary and how it's helpful to form an opinion more so than watching with commentary. Because you end up having more of yeah. an inner dialogue about the fight. Kind of what you perceive to you like, oh, well, he's doing this, he's doing that, he's doing this. Yeah. Kind of thing. Exactly. Uh, he also had an interesting Championship Rounds podcast, which he does with... Uh, oh, God, I always forget that dude's name. The guy who used to be on Fight Network with John Ramdean, I believe. Uh, they do talk to Connor Floyd and... Uh, Oh, they did mention something that's very interesting. You know, everyone's been talking about, like, oh, Connor was on welfare fucking however long ago. Welfare is super different in other countries. Yeah, and I was going to say, like, probably a bunch of other fighters living in their van have been on welfare, too. Yeah, especially well, in the United States. Well, in the U.S., like, welfare, we think of welfare as, like, fucking last resort. Um, whereas in play, Robin actually brought up that, like, in Canada, welfare is not, like, that big a deal. Like it's more like yeah, it's treated more like Canada probably aren't that big. Well, no, but not separating it a difference. In either, Ireland is the same way. They they it seems like they treat it more like unemployment than they do like welfare. Like because yeah. where it's like just a thing that happens when you're in between jobs, rather than like here it's like a fucking super desperate like crazy fact. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna just say it because I don't want to bring politics, but there are some parties involved that take advantage of welfare. I'll leave it at that. In the United States. That's right, like those Irish motherfuckers. Artem Loba. I'm just joking. I don't know. He's not in the United States. Um, I listened, it's forged in Russia. I listened to The Truth About Stuff 34. They talked about weed cookies that were passed out at a fight car, but were not described as weed cookies. Oh, great. There was just someone walking around being like, you want some cookies? And they, That's they're a like, fun light prank. Yeah. Well, no, it wasn't a, it meant to be a prank. They just assumed. Uh, and so dudes got high and did not expect to get high. Uh, they talked about some Amy fights, uh, and then the episode cut off for me again, 24 minutes in. So I don't know what's up with that feed. I don't know if it's just my podcast player or what, because it seems like my podcast player specifically is, like, running into issues with it. I use Podcast Addict on my phone, so it could be me. Uh, I believe you, me, had a funny bit about, uh, in the beginning of oh, it. That's your boy, Luis. Fucking Luis is annoying in this episode, like always. However, uh, the beginning of the episode, uh, Callum is in the background, oh, cool. hanging out with uh, some girl, and uh, Bisping yells at him to not get friend zoned. Oh wow! It's like thanks, Dad. Why yeah. Did you yelled at you, fucking dick. No, for real. And then uh, he Lu- just he just cock blocked him, which has led to the friend zone. So <laughs> it's like way to go, Dad. Well, and then Luis tells Bisping they're recording, and fucking Bisping's like, oh god. Calum's gonna fucking kill me. I think he, I think he says, uh, my son will legit kill me <laughs> at one point. Uh, then, he's a good wrestler. Yeah, for real. <laughs> his son's a beast. He's also a very nice guy. I've talked to him a couple times on the underground. He's a great dude. Uh, and then uh, Bisping tells the story of fighting uh, Jorge Rivera about how he intentionally kneed him while he was on the ground and then spit uh, tore, towards his con- corner, not on, on his corner. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, oh, Bisbee also reveals that he gets a flat fee, uh, not show and win money. Okay. Uh, and then he mentions that he signed up for Reddit and he's been on there more lately once he does everything else. Um, jo- I did listen to Josh Barnett Conquers the World Episode 1 with Shayna Baszler. Uh, I recommend checking it out. It's fucking awesome. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's a good quote. Josh. How many women live in your house together? Shayna. Four. Josh. And you have a machete in Venice. For what? Shayna. There's crazy homeless people. Who knows? Josh. And you're going to machete them? Shayna. Yep. They come onto the property. Josh. I don't remember you training you in the art of machete. Oh my. Uh, He also later talks about his weird knife fighting skills and uh, his history with that. Um, the talk, this was the, right before Shayna was, uh, about to debut in the UFC. This is back in 2014 when they recorded it. The podcast, Josh Barnett Conquers the World, if I didn't already say it. Oh, yeah. Um, but it's a, it's just a great fucking, uh, episode. Also, should be noted, Evan the producer was the, uh, producer for that show as well, along with, uh, Fighter and the Kid. Uh, and they talk about some song called Day 69 by Decapitated. 
or Decapitated Day 69 maybe is the name of the song. I don't know. Uh, it's all right. I think I sent out something about it this week on uh, Snapchat for some dumb reason because I was blacked out. Um, that works. Quickly, Jordan Breen show, they uh, talked for the first 30 minutes about rap, a lot of LL Cool J references and goofy shit. Talk Bellator NYC. And then Jordan Breen spirals and loses his fucking mind about Pacquiao and how he's a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I Can hope I Jeff Horn knocks Pacquiao the fuck out. Like, I don't want him to necessarily kill Pacquiao because I want Pacquiao to lose and then live with the fact that he's a fucking asshole. And the, for the fact that he wants all gay people, drug addicts, and yeah. trans people to die yeah, in Pacquiao open psycho. graves. He's clearly been hitting the head too many times. You no, know, Jordan went off uh, in a fucking wild way. Like, he spent 30 minutes just screaming about how Pacquiao's a piece of shit. And now if you're rooting for Pacquiao, you're a piece of shit. Don't listen to the show. Because if you're rooting for Pacquiao... You are absolutely ignoring all the her- heinous fucking shit he's done. Uh, but oh, Jordan Breen also lost a fucking friend that previous weekend to a uh, drug overdose. So I think had some like... Uh, yeah. It was, a, it was an interesting episode. And like, just like, I don't know. It was kind of awesome of uh, Breen to just be so honest about all that and be uh, so fucking bummed out. Um, let's see... I think the only other thing I had was... Oh, Pound for Pound podcast, uh, which is Sam Alvey's podcast, who we'll talk about in the next segment. I got to say what's up to Sam Alvey this last weekend at the Del Mar Fair and told him I love his podcast because it's real good. They had a guest on, uh, Steve Cazola from Bellator. Talked about the UFC training center they went to. Uh, Sam mentioned the Amy fights at the Del Mar Fair and mentioned how... Oh, dude, one thing he said was... He mentioned at the Amy fights this weekend, the refs in the back give him a speech that, hey, listen, I'm not going to stop a, a fight from a choke unless you tap, but if it's a if it's an arm bar or a joint manipulation sub, I'm going to stop it. That makes sense. Which, by the way, wish, wish Mario Yamasaki would have been involved in one of those conversations. Yeah. Uh, cause what the fuck? Also, to be fair though, the rest of that uh, Amy event were like Larry Landless and a couple guys, so they were like legit refs with a ton of experience. Um, I think that's basically it for pound for pound. Oh, and then they talk about the best food in Chicago, uh, cause uh, Sam's co-host is from there, so that was pretty cool. Uh, and then Sean Funky Baddest Man was good. Ben was back in the building, talked the pay per view. Talking about how they fucking hate Johnny Hendricks. Uh, the double knockdown. Uh, Joe says Fedor has made over two mil for his last 12 fights. Oh, wow. Uh, he's like, Good I'm not. Him. And Joe says, I'm not telling where I know that fact from. And Sean goes, well, Joe, we had Fedor's manager, Jerry Mellon, on last week. So I'm pretty sure it was probably Jerry. And she was like, wow. Ah. <laughs> pretty funny uh and then uh joe warren says uh he uh, he talks about how he's in the corner of uh, scott jorgensen and and how he thinks same thing happened to chandler so a surprisingly good weekend podcast this week i think the next week's gonna be pretty dry yeah like i feel like we're gonna get a lot towards the end of the week hash too like before the fights yeah we'll probably get a lot towards the end of the week for the uh big old uh ufc weekend stuff yeah, but, especially because I know it starts on Friday the seventh with the the tough fights, uh, re, re, well, tough finale. And then there's the Saturday card, <clears throat> and then that's the big one, two thirteen. Yeah, I think we're gonna get a lot of two thirteen coverage. I don't think we're gonna get a lot of Gaethje Johnson card coverage. Uh, yeah, so no, I think they're doing that now, and then two thirteen goes on yeah, one later. Yeah, so I think the beginning of this next week may be kind of slow, but. Should be interesting, uh, but we will wrap this segment here now that we've gone. Holy shit, we went long on that one. Uh, and then we were going to briefly talk about some of the fights we watch, and then uh, possibly we'll quickly break down the uh, UFC card depending on how time goes. But uh, yeah, if we have a chance, we'll do the Johnson versus Gage. Yeah, and if we don't, we, uh, we can always do it next week too. Yeah. So uh, we'll wrap this segment here, but we'll be back uh, in a minute to discuss all the fucking Bellator NYC card and the UFC card that happened this weekend. Um, I believe our clip for this first segment will be... Um, you know what? Fuck it. Check that out. Hi. 
punch him in the dick again, Davidus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's got, oh, there you go. Need him in, you need him in the groin. Like, he's mixing it up. On command. <laughs> Andre Ward, <laughs> hold on for these guys. Hit each other in the pills from range, please. <laughs> That, that ref must just hate groins. He's just like, yeah, that's what you get. Maybe he's a eunuch. He's kind of big and bald and like fleshy. <laughs> Maybe he he <laughs> he just been castrated. <laughs> so he's just like has a hatred for all. Yeah, he just hates them for it. Like, yeah. All he does, however. Groins must die. I do know, however, this referee has a beautiful singing voice. <laughs> 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 he really hits those high notes. All right, we are back. Uh, we're this is our breakdown. We're gonna talk about the uh, recap of Bellator 180, Son of Silva, and the uh, UFC Fight Night 112 card that happened. We also decided we're actually gonna put off our breakdown of the uh, card next week, uh, the Fight Night card, uh, since. Basically, we're not going to have much to recap next week outside of PFL anyway. We'll just cover all that uh, next week. So, um, But why don't we jump into the Bellator 180 card, which, thank God, is sure to have listed correctly by only having it all on one card. Yeah. Um, so, where do we begin? I want to start with uh, Ryan Couture. Ryan Couture had a super good win against uh, Haim Ghazali. Uh, he just contoured his way to a victory. It was awesome to see. Because uh, Ryan, a lot of times, is too content to stay on the outside or shoot for takedowns. Whereas his dad, and it seems like his style, based off this fight, works best when you're just constantly walking dudes down and shoving them against the fence and beating the fuck out of them in the clinch. Like, he did, just did a great job of beating the fuck out of him in the clinch and absolutely giving him troubles the entire time from it. Um, just a super impressive performance. Kept winning all the exchanges, and uh, I was uh, I it was I was happy to see that because I, I like that dude. Yeah, nice good for guy. Ryan Couture. I remember the last time I saw him fight, dude. I think it was like four years ago. He's we gotten, were at Brewski's. Yeah, he's on. I think it was like his debut, and he kept showing me that highlight of him getting kicked in the fucking head by some dude. I think it was his Bellator debut. He's had a couple rough fights in Bellator. Uh, Heather Hardy took on Alex She's Yager. the pro boxer, right? Yeah. That was a wild fucking fight. Uh, I guess when they were talking to Alice Yager in the back for the uh, pre-fight stuff, Alice Yager's like, the, they asked her, like, so uh, you looking to take this fight to the ground and test her ground game? And Alice Yager's like, no, I see some holes in her stand-up. And Brendan and Jimmy Smith were like, what holds do you see in her stand-up? The yeah. fucking four times Golden Glove champ or whatever she is. Yeah. She's fucking a beast. And, uh, yeah, this fight was... It. Alice Yager just did not wrestle, really. She did a little bit. Did but she only, get cocky? I didn't watch this fight. Only either. after she was... Uh, yeah, I mean, it was... To be fair, she was landing some bombs. But Heather Hardy eventually was just able to find her range and started fucking ballistering Alice Yager with shots and just put her yeah. out. It was... Alice Yager has a fucking chin. She took some shots in that fight, but, uh, yeah. Heather Hardy able to come out victorious. Super adorable in the post-fight speech, just being, Well, wow, like, she knocked her out with 13 seconds left. Holy yeah, shit. she put her out late, and she was beating the shit out of her for most of that fight, but she was put, like, really was able to finally find a range and just put the pace on at the end, uh... And then, yeah, it just was super sweet and adorable in the post-fight speech. And uh, from New York, to speaking in a New York accent to the hometown crowd, saying she comes from, like, a long line of tough women and, like, big up in New York and all that shit. It was just a, it was a good win and cool to see. Uh, James Gall Gallagher took on Chinzo Is it Gallagher Machida. or Gallagher? I don't know. I've heard it's Gallagher. Is that, um, I know Ariel pronounces it that way. I, I believe it's Gallagher. Dude, but uh, just us Americans ignorantly just call it Gallagher. Because like we assume bar. that, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah Gallagher. I was going to say like the like the watermelon guy, but yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, James Gallagher, uh, a.k.a. a younger version of Connor. I don't fucking know. I mean, he's They're closer both... to a younger version of Connor than a younger version of Artem. 
That's yeah. Uh, took on Chenzo Machida. Uh, a younger version of Connor if he utilizes his BJJ skills. Yeah, a younger version of Connor taking on an older version of Leota. Yes. Uh, Twice his age. Which 20 did, year old versus 4 year old. Yeah, which did not work out well for Machida. Uh, I, think I thought we, Machida. Did we was, both choose Machida, I think, surprisingly? I think so. I thought yeah. he was going to manage his distance better. Um, but Chinzo got clipped a little bit on the exchanges, and then Gal- Galher blew the first takedown, but was able to get the second, and that was basically it. Like, he just got the body lock from that point, and that was pretty much a wrap. Uh, Chinzo got caught super deep in that choke. Uh, and just had no way to go about uh, getting out of it. Uh, big win for Gallagher. Talked mad shit afterwards. And uh, get ready to hear some SBG hype in Bellator from that kid. I mean, good for him. He's only People 20. are hyped on him, man. Yeah. So he's got a lot of room to grow. Uh, this next fight, which was for the Bellator light heavyweight was exactly like the first fight in the UFC about five years ago. It was a little better. Yeah. Um, but it was What did you rough. think of the decision win for Ryan Bader, the new lightweight champ? So I rewatched this fight. I, I need to watch it again for a third time because uh, I was only half paying attention this Initially, second. didn't me and you give it to Davis even though we watched bits and bits of it? Yeah, we watched so little of it, though. Um, and we I think it was because the highlights that kept showing was Davis piecing them up. I think that's my own, mainly why. I mean, to be fair, we... For full disclosure, we were actually driving to the theater while we were watching this fight. Yeah. Because uh, we did go see this, uh, the pay-per-view card in the theater, which is fucking awesome, by the way. Shouts out to now it. all theaters having beer. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. That, that, even if they are like eight bucks for a fucking 12 ounces of, I guess eight bucks for I, 12 I ounces just, of I just not do that the bad. baseball game mentality where like if I'm at a Padres game and I'm already down to spend 10 bucks, I'm down to spend seven to eight bucks in a fucking beer in a movie. Yeah. And for eight bucks for a sculpin is like not bad. You yeah, know? no, that's like regular bar price. Yeah. You got an unfiltered sculpin for what? Like 11? No, they ran out. Remember they teased oh, me. Oh, right. I was. Upset. Well, no, they didn't run out. They were just warm. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not fucking with that. No. Yeah. Warm and filtered scoping is not the jam. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, so I actually had this. I on the rewatch, I think Ryan Bader might have taken it. Uh, mainly off the takedowns, uh, and just kind of pressuring a little bit. Isn't more. he the better overall wrestler? Like he is in in a small margin. Well, right? like no on paper, but yes in in May. Um, like Phil is a better wrestler on paper, but in MMA, Ryan Bader is a much better wrestler. Um, I thought it was a good fight. I need, I want to rewatch it again. I watched it twice. It's really close. There is a lot of circling, um, but it's not nearly as bad as people are giving it fucking shit for. Like it's, there's still pushing the pace like I it did help that Dan uh, Merliata did tell them hey you're here to fucking fight not not move around uh, in the middle of that fight which is totally okay to do because timidity is one of the rules um, but I don't know kind of interesting oh. this welterweight bout was pretty great yeah did. all things considered Douglas Lima that's right. I as we, said keep, we always keep wanting to call him Diego because he's tough. Yep. That's fine. Douglas Lima took on Lorenz Larkin. This was good. I think me and you both scored this 48-47 initially like right off the bat, right? Yeah. In uh, favor of Lima, which is what I think two of the three judges, one judge gave it 50-45. I don't see that at all. Larkin easily, at easily least won. One. He handily won one round and yeah. just gone a slightly won another round. Which yeah. Which we get 40-47. Yeah, I gave it to Lima mainly. I mean, he dropped Larkin in the second, and uh, he he was just able to outland him pretty consistently, despite Lorenz. Oh, but remember those final strikes were dead even, dude. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, the, the the strike counts were insanely close, even, which yeah. is crazy. It was just a round um, by round basis. Yeah, but Lima just overall was able to land the much cleaner, harder shots. It seemed like. Also, it should be noted. Uh, they count block strike as, as landed strikes on. Um, oh wow! Okay. On uh, I didn't know that. On uh, whatever their metric is, forget the name of it. Uh, Aaron Pico, Josh, Fr- Zach Freeman. Oh boy. Uh, yeah. I almost missed this fight because it was so quick. Like yeah. I, I was gonna go get a beer, 
And then I like ran out there, grabbed a beer, sat down, and it ended basically. I think it was right as you sat down, like, oh, he's got it in or something like that. No, I, I think I was literally walking up as they were like walking, like touching gloves to start. Uh, yeah. Yeah, man. Zach Freeman just immediately after an exchange of the clip, Aaron Pico with the uppercut and grabbed that arm and guillotine in. Yeah. That was it. Like, Aaron Pico had yeah. nothing for the they game. They made a terrible mistake in giving Pico a fight, his first ever professional debut against, against someone who has 10 fighter. fucking fights. Yeah. Like, holy shit. It's insane. Uh, um, also, I, I heard, I don't I can't confirm this for sure. But I heard that Aaron Pico has been working jiu-jitsu with Eddie Bravo for two months. Oh. So, like, that's wow. not that's not enough time yeah, no. uh, to know anything. Oh, and shouts out to the drunk person behind us saying, All you had to do is stick uh, your right hand up to his neck. I could have gotten out of that. Yeah, we should note that we had the drunkest Mexican dudes behind us. They came back f- straight from a beer fest that they were at all day. And they were 100% blacked out the entire time. There was, like, one dude in the news talking about, was that one black guy sitting behind me? Like, I think he knew Fedor. There was a black dude? Yeah, he was sitting behind me. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. They all sounded so Mexican. No, uh, the white guy was the one talking Mexican. There was a big white guy right behind you. Oh, really? Yeah, See, I never up. actually yeah. looked at him. Yeah, because I turned all back just sounded and I, like, Mexican cracked a joke fuck. and they were laughing or something like that. But then the more drunk they got, the more they didn't want to talk to anyone except for their loud, obnoxious selves. Well, oh, and so the Mexican dude, who's who I was going to say, it was actually the white guy who picked every fucking winner despite picking all the underdogs. Like, he picked Zach Freeman, he picked Brent Primus, he picked Matt Mitrione, all back-to-back. He did, yeah, yeah. And, and they he's were like, I'm like, not taking shots, fuck you. Yeah, they're like, yo, two shots says, they're like, oh, yo, you want to bet on this? I bet you two shots. And I shots think they said they fucked up Joe. They said it. and they said you take a shot in the Uber. Yeah. <laughs> they're like they're like fucking oh it's, it's, uh, he I say Aaron Pico takes uh, takes this. You want to make a two shot bet? And then he lost that, and they come back. He's like, "All right, I got Michael Chandler. You want to bet Brent Primus?" And the drunk dude's like, "Yeah, fuck him. Brent Primus is gonna fuck him up, or Primus is gonna fuck him up." Uh, he lost, and then he won that shit, and then they did a third one on Mitrion, and then Fader already won that, and then the other dude was just done. They actually they just stopped talking after Fader and Mitrion. No, they just kept going mad. Yeah, mad. Or something like they were that, just yeah. black the fuck out of that <laughs> yeah. one, I think. But uh, it was pretty wild. But yeah, big big debut or uh, big uh, big name win for Zach Freeman. Yeah, who had uh, I think just won the LFA. Or RFA, I fucking get it confused. It's now. LFA now. But he was the LFA lightweight champ. People forget that. So he was a champion in another organization, and he yeah. looked fucking good. He's a big guy too for 155. For sure. And tough do you dude. think Pico should stay at 155? I think she dropped it. Well, I, he's pretty bit. He's pretty built though. From the way Joe and Ben were so surprised about him fighting 55, I think he's probably be at 45. Yeah, um, he'll probably slim down. And he's a wrestler. Yeah. So like, I don't That's know. That's why he's we'll a stocky that. build. Yeah. Um, Brent Primus, Brent Michael Prometheus, Chandler. Prometheus, yeah. I, I mean, we talked about this enough, I think, already, pretty much. Yeah, dead nerves. Michael Chandler, unfortunately, And yeah. he still knocked him the fuck down on one leg. Yeah, knocked him down on one leg. Tough as nails. Never fuck. had his eyes off him. He never even looked at his fuck. He was just like this the whole time in kill mode, man. That shit was nuts. Fuck the New York State Athletic Commission for pulling the chair out from under him. That was a dick move. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it was. I, I, they're going to run this fight back, and uh, they should, because this this probably should have been called a no contest. I understand that it was technically due to a strike, but, like, come on. What are we doing? Like, it. In no way did anyone feel like Brent Premis won that fight because he outfought Michael Chandler. Yeah. Like, I just remember all I get seeing. He's just like, ah, ah, I'm not champion, ah. Yeah, like, he was, oh, he was no. not the, not the best afterwards. Oh no, uh, especially after winning via injury. Uh, but oh, Matt now he's on, v- yeah. versus Fedor. Uh, talk about Did you winning. Say Matt the, Matrione. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I forget who calls him that. Uh, <laughs> So one of the podcasts I listen to call him Matt Matt. For when someone, I've remember this one guy went like way too talented. He's like Matt Mitrione. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was a fucking that was a hell of a goddamn fight. Um, 
It, they landed almost nothing up until the last, like, 15 seconds. Dude, how insane did the whole theater go when they got that we, double knock? And we all lost our shit. I just kept going, holy shit, holy shit. Like, fucking what the fuck. That that oh, double right hand. That presentation of the walkout to the last. Was the worst. You no, know, that Sneep song was tight. Oh, the walkout was fine. That's the, what I'm saying. The wait, are you saying the 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 national anthem? No, dude, that was that was for, that was for the main event. Oh, for you, that's for the main event. Oh, I'm talking about his right, walkout right, was right, fucking right, right, tight, right. dude. Had like the flames and shit with like the Russian steel. Oh, the flag. you're right. You're like, right. Oh, that was dope. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, like some emperor Sar shit, man. Like that was so sick. Yeah, no, just, hyped him up. You know, it was just Bellator doing yeah. Bellator big show things. Yeah. I love it, like old pride style. Um, so there was that. Uh, but yeah, that 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 fight was wild. A couple crazy changes where both dudes were landing, and they both throw that right hand. But they both fall. It went how we both did. We both say Matt by knockout. I believe I we believe did. So, <laughs> but but like they both threw that right hand. They both fell, and they both like scrambled towards each other. But Matt was just able to get there first and started throwing. He's those, like, oh shit! I gotta get Fedor's back. He started throwing those nasty yeah. uppercuts from like. Under the arm while uh, on a like a top north south position, and then uh, or once not he, north south, but like uh, once he kind of had like sprawl. that full. It wasn't really full melt. It's like he was just kind of like on him halfway with his knees. He just landed that straight punch to the fucking just forehead. Well, and, he, and then he well, like Fedor fell out. back to av- to avoid those uppercuts, and then Matt just bing and yeah. hits him once, and then as he's falling, his he head like snaps. Dan back. Henderson yeah. bings him again, yeah. and he was out. Uh, 100%. He, he got cold, yeah. Uh, it was just a very impressive performance from Matt uh, Mitchell. Brennan Schaub, I think we talked about earlier, told the hilarious story of uh, being like. So you just Matt. knocked out Fedor in yeah, Fedor's right next to corner. Yeah. It's like Fedor's corner with him um, so angry. The co main co main event was Neiman Gracie, I think the nephew of. Henzo, I think it was Henzo. I think Henzo. Uh, versus Dave, the people behind me going, Dave, knock him out, Dave, the whole time. Like, oh no. Yeah, it should be noted. You got the that, worst tattoo in the world, Dave. Yeah. Should, yeah. It should be Which noted. Which he did. It was pretty bad. Yeah, it was pretty bad. But the, it should be noted this fight was originally, I think, supposed to be on the prelims, but it was, I, like, I think it was, it was a swing bout. I think it was so. coming event or someone was talking about how these are the fights Bellator doesn't let you know they're on there and they just have them in this filler in a way. Well, and they, they a lot yeah. of times will run them <clears throat> after the fight card, too. Yeah. It's just like basically. Oh, so like WWE style where they have the fake fights to please fans. Exactly. Well, it's one of those fights yeah. where it's like. If something finishes early, then we will run, and we have enough time, we'll run another fight. If not, it'll happen off TV. Um, uh, this went how we both expected, I guess. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, he fucking got the crazy. Joke. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, Marfano this, had some okay exchanges. In I the was, heat, uh, yeah, and I missed a chunk of this fight too because I was trying to grab a goddamn beer, and it's fucking impossible. Honestly, some it was just Marfano's takedown defense was decent the whole time until yeah. finally he just got gassed out, and then Gracie got his back. And then See, that's some fact, that's all. That's all it was, and he lit up Gracie a little bit on the feet, but Gracie, see some, yeah. Some fat fuck was working the bar at that point at the uh, at the theater. Oh, the guy who said doesn't know how to switch out beers. Oh my god! Beer, right? I don't or didn't you, know what a beer is. No, like someone asked yeah. him for a beer and he was like, "Oh, uh, we we don't have that," so he had to call in some other person to bring him a cold version of that beer, which was on the menu. Oh, so like, like the Tom Segura, I can't give you change. Uh, it, it was like it was like I, was, I can't handle it. I stayed there for like five minutes. I walked away. I came back later, and it was still the same dude in line. Luckily, I came back later, and uh, it was still the same dude, but now the chick who served us earlier, it was cool as shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who, uh, who was fucking ultra nice, actually. She was all stoked. She's like, yeah. what, there's fights here tonight? That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, I do it. Uh, she was rad, but yeah, it was fucking... Eh. Yeah, fuck that guy. But uh, we should get to the main event. Chael Sonnen and Vanderlei Silva. Chael, the American gangster Sonnen versus Vanderlei, the Axe Goblin Silva. Those walkouts were brutal. The the national anthems for both are brutal. I loved your comment. Vanderlei's Looney Tunes. Uh, I just, by the way, just yeah. totally insulted all Brazil. No, uh, come in. I believe we've talked about how good, how like it sounds like some. But it was like, just like. Doo, 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 and I was like, "Hey, but that, but hey, but that's Brazil, folks." Yeah. <laughs> There's some shit. Like, it, what the fuck? Their is going national on? anthem absolutely <laughs> sounds like a Looney Tunes skit. <laughs> it's fucking. And then seeing insane. the Axe Goblin's face with his hand over his heart the whole time, listening to Looney Tunes. 
iTunes. It's kind of hard to take it. It's rough. Yeah. Um, they, it was just as bad as Dave Navarro's rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. That was oh, except terrible. no, because that's so much more fucking yeah. obnoxious. At least it wasn't like it was Tony, one of those dudes at the NBA Finals like the 90s where they forget the lyrics where he's like, And the Rockets! Red Clap! <laughs> and it just stops Shrek. with his voice. Cr- yeah, so at least they have that blunder, but... Shrek. Whoa, and Sure Dog. That's all right. Sure Dog's a piece of shit. Uh, either way, what did you think of this fight? Did I think... Did we both... I think I picked Silva by knockout because I was talking about last week... Or... Yeah, a week and a half ago, how we I was talking about how Sana looked like shit against Tito, and he didn't care. Well, yeah, and his weigh-ins worried me a lot too. Yeah, I think uh, I I think I did the same thing, but uh, so he pulled a fast one on us, folks. He looked great. Yeah, well, all he things considered, like, all things considered, he what we thought, it looked exactly like the fight that happened on the Ultimate Fighter, which I forget who called that ahead of time. But it was maybe it was in Kit or uh, or maybe like uh, Zane Simon or somebody like that. No, maybe it was Phil McKenzie. I forget who. Somebody at one point said, "You guys all know this fight's gonna look exactly like the Ultimate Fighter fight, but just longer, right?" Uh, and that's exactly what it was. Ch- Vandalay literally would just run in, hip forward, zero percent idea of t- uh, defending any kind of takedowns and. Just got mauled the entire time because of it. Like, it was not... He clipped Chael twice, and both times, he would just run forward in a way that gave Chael the takedown. Yeah. It was it was exactly how everyone should have thought that fight was going to go. Like, now that we've been... Now that we're past it, like... I, It's insane to think anything other than exactly that was going to happen. I just thought Chael was not there anymore because of uh because of how poorly he did against Tito and how how weird he looked at the weigh-ins uh but clearly didn't affect him so pretty weird um so I guess we should get to the UFC Fight Night 112 card OKC in Oklahoma City Oklahoma yeah uh, this first fight and by the way folks I had gotten off work at 5 so I had to get a race home and I caught the main card which started at 6 so me and Paul were watched. He showed me the first half of the uh, the, the first fights, really. Yeah. Uh, so Jeremy Kimmel and Jake Gyllenhaal look alike from a uh, Southpaw. Josh Stansbury, yep. a, the Ultimate Fighter alum. Uh, this was interesting. Both uh, dudes came out throwing heat, and then Jeremy yeah. Kimmel clipped him, and then took a step to the right and Donkey Kong punched the shit out of the side of his head. Yeah. If Artem Lobov had reach. And accuracy and timing and any and of power. the things. He, he does have power. power. He does have power, yes. He, he just does. doesn't have any of the other things yeah. that help with power. Uh, yeah, Jeremy Kimball, impressive knockout. Uh, I don't know what it means for him yet, because that division is... Weird. Okay. <sighs> Interesting nonetheless. Um, let's see, Tony This Martin. fight was cool. I love this fight. Tony Tony Martin took on Johnny Case. Johnny Case, if you guys don't know, is very uh, well, you at least used to be a frequenter of the underground, uh, MA Underground, and uh, it's just a nice dude. A couple times I've interacted with him. Took on Tony Martin, and holy shit, did Tony Martin put on a performance in this fight? Like the, he cracked Case with some bombs in that shit, and uh, I was super impressed. Yeah, I was very impressed too. They they both had some good scrambles, and even Martin almost pulled off that Kamara before uh, Case was saved by the bell at the end of the third round. Yep, he looked in some good danger there. So either way, congratulations to Tony Martin in that lightweight division, still having some killers, people looking like killers climbing up the ranks. So, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Jared Gordon took on Michael Quinones. Uh, Jared Gordon just out wrestled him and beat him the fuck up on the ground basically yeah. in this fight uh, tough to say about that man. he just won all yeah. the exchanges and absolutely took it to him uh, Daryl Horcher and Devin Powell great fight this was split because of Powell's effort at the end right wasn't it with that, that guillotine he was trying to catch him in wasn't that what that was he I guess off his back I don't see how you give guard, that to Devin right? Powell at all though I wouldn't no I thought that was clearly Daryl Horcher the whole time this pretty clearly up. like won every exchange in my opinion I thought that was pretty clear cut would you say 30-27 I, I could say 29-28 I think Powell did win round 3 because he was he kind of had him in a submission attempts off his back and he controlled that 
<laughs> I mean, if you were to give one to Powell. But either way, it was cl- very think, clear yeah, victory. Was real close, I think though. it was a very clear victory for Horcher. Either way. Yeah, I, I probably had 30-27 Horcher. The, one of those rounds probably could have swung either way, but I just... Super impressive performance, and that dude looks exactly as tough as he always has. Uh, yeah. Just tough motherfucker who throws bombs. Then you got former strawweight champion of the world, Carla Esparza, versus... Uh, Marina Moros from yep, Ukraine. Marina Moros and Moros. Carlos Esparza had a fucking scrap. It was uh, a fun fight. Yeah, Esparza had some trouble in the first two rounds. Or, I mean, early on she had some trouble. Uh, but I feel like once she shut down some of Marina's ground game, it was basically the end of the fight. Like, Marina kind of just didn't have shit for her after that. Yeah. Uh, third round was kind of close. Marina, like, had some moments, but... Uh, I feel like Carla essentially... Like, she was able to close that distance due to her size disadvantage. She too. just kept getting those takedowns later and later in the yeah. fight. like the, Especially the second and third. She got like such definitive takedowns and was able to hold enough ground control. And just... like She landed some hard shots up against the cage. And uh, just a, a really solid performance from Carla. And uh, did exactly what she needed to do to get that win. Uh, Marvin Vittori, Vitor Miranda. This we was were close. absolutely right on this as far as who would win because the fact that the the Italian dream Marvin Vittori survived against Antonio Carlos Jr. So we yep. were good in calling this. This yep. guy's got some grit. They so, had some. Uh, they both had some moments in this fight to be yeah. fair, but uh, yeah, Vittori I think Vittori's bread and butter is kickboxing. I, I think it was. I believe so, and he still got clipped a couple of times, but yeah, uh, he was just able to out. I'll I think these guys are lightweights as well, out. right? Are they are they big ones? They might be welterweights. Be yeah, I think they're welterweights. Uh, either way, exciting fight. This next fight, Clay Guido. Wow, haven't seen him look this good in a while. He looked absolutely fantastic. Clay Guido looked awesome. Yeah, this is uh, one of his best performances that we've seen in a while, uh, and he absolutely dominated Eric Coke in a, like a fucked up kind of way. Like he, I think he had some fifth, some. Uh, like 30, 26 rounds in there, no, too. He did. Oh, yeah. Like, it was just extremely dominant top control and beating the fuck at Eric Coke on the ground the entire time. Yeah, he hasn't had a finish since 2011, but it's, at this point, you're 35, you just want to get the wins. Absolutely. So. Uh, Dennis Seaver took on BJ Penn. This uh, was tough for a lot of BJ fans was, to watch. I, I love this fight, made me feel okay about BJ up until the last round. Yeah, that's a good point. After BJ got that takedown, that he was had that knockdown too. Remember that he knocked in, see well, what fucked was, up. That was the takedown. Yeah, that was where Rube, I'm yeah. it was like he got that knockdown. He got on top, and then that was about it for BJ. Uh, he threw some bombs, gas hard, and then just ate head kicks. Credit to Dennis Seaver. His cardio looked great. He was active with those leg kicks. Were literally chopping down BJ. Which is hard to do because BJ is really good at checking that shit, and he checked a couple. But he hard. looked he looked checked out. As G6 would not like. Towards the end, yeah. He looked okay towards the middle of the fight. Like, there was a moment there where it looked like old BJ, like, when he hit that flurry and dropped it. Yeah. It looked like old BJ. Because he kept, he stuck him with a couple hard jabs and some overhands, and it was, like, looking like the way BJ used to look, moving in and out, and then just, after he dropped him, that was the, that was it. That's all BJ had. Yeah. Uh, Tim Means, Alex Garcia. This I picked is, this one I, wrong. I think I chose Tim Means, but as for the... I don't know. Well, I said Tim, Me- Tim Means would win because he'd grind him out against the fence and, and hit him with a bunch of knees in a clinch. I remember watching this fight, kind of, because I was already pretty buzzed. Do you remember if he hit him with the clinch at all or a bunch of knees? Maybe a couple times, but I think it was more distance fighting. It was more on the out, sticking on the outside and avoiding but anything But I do remember do. 100% Alex Garcia did win that first round. He fucking clipped Means hard with yeah. a bunch of hooks. But then after that, Means after just that, kept coming back harder yeah. and harder and yeah. clipping Alex with a bunch of oh. bombs. Uh, I know Alex Garcia is still a good talent, though, for sure. Either way, he oh, impressed for sure. me. Because I had never seen him fight before. Um, so there's that... However, this fight, newcomer Dominic Reyes, the 205 versus Joachim Christensen. What a fucking performance. Only 29 seconds to dispatch Christensen. Blew my mind. Wow. Wow. His, his striking was absolutely Dude, he, precise. He his precision was so, precise. He clipped him so you know, early on and just kept the pressure yeah. and kept banging him with hard I, shots until he was out. I think they'll give him another fight against someone who's unranked. 
I know they just gave Tyson Pedro a fight, but I would love to see this guy versus Tyson Pedro to shake up the light heavyweight. Yeah, somebody like that, yeah. like a, a weird or like, even a uh, the Bear Jew, Paul Craig. Yeah, that'd Paul be a good Craig fight is a perfect next Dominic fight. Williams. I think that'd so. be perfect. Yeah, yeah, Paul Craig, that'd be a fun fight. That'd be great. Uh, I think they should do it next. This fight, Felice, uh, I'm not young and pretty enough, Herrig, uh, versus Justine Boom Boom Kish. Which is ironic because she got in a video game when she was young because she was young and pretty. Wait, wait, what video game was that? Who knows? I forget. There's an MMA game that she was on. It's her, Jens Pulver, and somebody else. Like on the cover or something? No, they're like playing characters. It's weird. Uh, That sounds really weird. It's weird. It was like, it was the game that led up to the uh, EA MMA game. I forgot real quick. I know EA MMA came out in like 2008, strike 2009. Force. It was all Strike Force. Yeah, it was like Fedor. Wait, was Tyron Woodley uh, in that? Yeah, because it was one of mm, I don't. There wasn't that many fighters. There was like uh, maybe like five, ten actual fighters in it. I probably like Purdue. Rockhold is probably no, definitely in that. Rockhold, I think, was one. It was like, uh, yeah, it was, it was only I'm, I'm going to look guys. at gameplay that later. I think Jock I'm, I'm very, I'm very curious uh, about that. That's yeah, like, I have it on 360. Was actually. it actually a decent game? People like it because it's used as fight next controls. Ooh. So all the striking is on a stick. I'd like that a lot. It, but it just leads to everyone throwing hooks the entire time. Uh, yeah. So or it's uppercuts. Like, yeah. Lean back, uppercut, lean back, uppercut. That kind of thing. Catch him. Or yeah. par- perfect parry, flash KO bullshit, right? It was, yeah, it was a no. little weird. Uh, like UFC 1. Yeah, it was a little weird. I still say uh, that the. TH, the third THQ game, yes. undisputed. The one with Anderson Silva kicking Vitor in the face. That cover, that one was the best amazing one. Game, Pride yeah. mode. Yeah. Yeah, best one. But the best career mode too. Yeah, UFC two is real close. Oh, best career mode, best uh, title mode is the shit in that game. Yeah, I, I still I loved, play title I, mode. In I just love being sponsored game. by fuck it. I was Ruka, Tilted Kill, anything. Fuck it, Harley Davidson. You well, slap all those sponsors on. That shit was tight. Right. Well, dude, I also fucking yeah, they have that title mode where basically you just pick a fighter and you fight your way through the division, and when you unlock, like when you beat it, you unlock the title defense mode for that person where you, you just fight as many people. Yeah. You'll run through the you, entire you, roster you, one time. Do you remember that time I told you I never got to do tile defense mode because my only fight I won the belt was my retirement fight according to Mike Asshole Goldberg. That's he's like, this is your last fight, buddy. You better win the belt. And then I did. And he's like, alright, you're done. And then that was it. Game over. That's Yay. Nice. Uh, speaking of shitty decisions. Ooh. Tim Barbarian Boach. Nope. Wait. What's up? We didn't talk about the shitty decision. Wait, didn't we just... Weren't we just still talking about I Felice? I mean, we kind of talked about Felice. Yeah. We didn't talk about how much she beat the shit out of Justin Keish in that fight. Yeah, that's true. And then or she Kish. went... And then she, I don't know why I said Keish. God damn it, went, and Matt she went, Yeah, I know. Matt Sarah. And then she went boom, boom on the mat, which we didn't notice, right? I actually didn't know. No, I actually yeah. watched this fight twice. Didn't notice either time. I'm sure the camera cut away. They probably did. They had no, to. No, I think I just wasn't paying attention no. When I was watching it so, to the mat. Good performance by Felice Herrig. I don't know who the fuck she'll fight. Super in. impressive yeah. performance, yeah. I um, want to see her towards uh, some fight some in the top five for sure. Justine Ooh, Kish. Paige. Paige and Felice would be a great fight. Didn't they already fight? I swear to God, Paige Van Zandt beat her or something retarded. Yeah, but that was back when Felice didn't have the ground game she has now. Oh, okay, then fuck it. Have a fight again. Yeah. yeah. I think, and Paige is not on a good run currently. Yeah, no, she's like flashing or something. I don't know what the fuck she's doing. Uh, she's rolling on the ground. Yeah. All right, call me an event. Tim Barbarian Boach versus Johnny Pigrig. Missing weight at 185. Wow. Yeah. Johnny needs to retire, bro. He does need to retire. Uh, he ended up getting finished via a head kick and punches on top of Justin Kish's doo-doo stain. Yeah, he yeah. literally went out on Justin Kish's shit, um, which is unfortunate for him. But yeah. I feel like it's a little bit of... It's, it's a, a little, little telling. A little bit of scale vengeance there. Yeah. Uh, Tim Boach looked great. He caught him with about 15 uppercuts at the end of that fight. Yeah. Uh, he hit that head kick and hit, hit him with like 15 uppercuts, and that was pretty much it. Uh, Johnny got real close to a couple left hands. Like, he was throwing some bomb left hands, and none of them landed. Yeah. Uh, but he got real close, and, but yeah, Tim just absolutely popped him and gave him real fucking trouble. This is exactly the type of dude I figured Johnny would have trouble with at 185, and 
dude, if you're missing weight at 185, like, we can't have you competing. Yeah. Like, you need to figure that out before you compete again. I mean, I think he just has a food addiction or something, or something serious, like, I mean, that none of us do. I would lean more towards, like, drinking or something. Drinking, probably? I don't know, man. Like, if food addiction is one thing, but, like, he, like... Man, maybe I just maybe I just can't see having that bad of a food addiction. As a fat person, I can't see it. Uh, it just seems like so he was doing so good for so long, and then just he dropped off a fucking cliff after he lost the belt. Yeah, uh, it just seems like something else is up. Uh, but I don't know. I have no actual inside knowledge or anything. It's hundred percent speculation. Yeah. Um, Kevin Lee, Michael Kiesa. So this ended in controversy. Surprising finish. Yeah, we knew going in, uh, Kevin Lee, he had submitted Francisco Trinaldo, he has very long arms, he has Which is a with, fucking, that's a goddamn statement, but Trinaldo's a But looking at Kiesa's resume, me and you both picked him to win via submission, which is not a bad pick at all. Um, i this was a matter, if they fought again. Yeah. Do you think they'll rematch, by the way? I don't think so. No. I don't Kevin think Lee's, they will. It's Ke- probably Kevin not fair Lee's to Kevin Lee. Yeah, no. Just because he did so well, it's probably not fair to him, but I would like to see it. Yeah, so the controversy for people, um, well, I'm sure everyone listening or whoever wants to hear this, they probably saw what the controversy was. So, uh, by the way, great setup by Kevin Lee biting his own glove after he... Uh, yeah, Reddit had yeah, that fucking he has clip. A, uh, after he had one hand po- uh, get resting against the fence to position himself and sink that in. I remember, I think it was Matt Sarah that mentioned it. Yeah. Kiesa looked up at the clock, and then after once he looked up, oops, and then he just got full neck was taken. Yeah. Uh, Lee cranked it in there. Kiesa was doing a great job of fighting the hands, and then his kind of did like the little whatever the fuck they called it, uh, thing with his hands and yeah, looks like he's like going out. Swim move or whatever. Do you think he was going? I mean, I honestly think he was, he was two more definitely seconds. going yeah, out. He probably would have been out. Like, but was, that is why, as the referee, if you're worth a shit, you check, you grab their hand, you lift it up, and you see if they have any resistance. Yeah. Because yeah, that's, that's the move. You, Shale didn't agree. He said he thought it was excellent. I don't think so. I Here's the problem it's, it is the right call, probably. However,. The reason you're able to make that call is you have to check and see whether they're unconscious. Yeah, he didn't even check. He just looked. He just looked and went for it. Like, which I, I get that he was about... He looked like he was about to go out. I thought he was going out as as Mario called it. Yeah. But, like, you you still got to grab the glove. Because he looked pretty case. aware once well, that he let go of that, too. Like, well, and as we there. mentioned earlier... Fucking Larry Landless and those refs at the Emmy fights down here in San Diego last weekend even said, like, we're not going to save you from a choke unless you go out. We're only going to save you from an arm bar if it looks like it's going to break, like, or, like, uh, some kind of joint manipulation. Yeah. But, like, not not chokes. Like, you either tap or you sleep. Or, uh, and that's why we check the glove is because that's how you prove whether or not someone's asleep, which... Re- which Amazing refs like Big John and Herb always do in those situations. Herb does it all the time. Herb will lunge in, and then if he sees you're not all the way out, he'll, he'll like stop and brace himself on the yeah. cage. Like it'll be close sometimes, but they you gotta check the glove, and he didn't do it. He just assumed Kiesa went out, which you can't do. You have to prove he went out, or you and Kiesa would rather that like, and it's not like with strikes. Although, well, it's not like with strikes where, like, you, you, can, you can let them go out for a second and then do it. Like, and ch- you have enough time to check the glove to where it's not probably life-ending detrimental. Like, with strikes, it's a little different. However, all the momos, including a lot of fucking professional fighters on podcasts saying that it is all right to go unconscious due to lack of oxygen or blood to the brain and it's, it's not that detrimental no that's it's super wrong. detrimental yeah. and it's super bad for your health it's just not as bad as also having your brain rattled around at the time it's like it, you, you can i absolutely agree it's not as bad that's as like getting ko like saying kids are playing that stupid uh, stop your breathing game on your chest like 10 or 15 years ago oh wow idea. that was a long time ago yeah i think that was legit like 10 years ago or yeah. you know, or something. Probably, probably, it's, probably when I, it's when we were in middle school or whatever. Yeah, you know? I, I was like, I just remember like my parents are like, like Chris, Kyle, don't ever be this fucking stupid. I'm like, Dad, I'm, I'm good. I'm like, I'm not a dumbass. 
Yeah. He's like, all right. Yeah, because it's like in a newspaper or some shit. Like, For sure. But yeah, it was just, it's a real dumb to, yeah. to see that, like, uh, Mario wouldn't even try and check the glove at all. Like, it's just disappointing. Uh, I feel bad for Michael. I I feel like he should get a rematch. I don't feel like it's fair to Kevin Lee to give him a rematch immediately. Yeah. Because dude, that shit was He'll so. He'll probably end up deep. fighting again down the line. That's what I'm. That's what I'm figuring. What, what do you think's next for Lee? I think we, me and you, both mentioned off uh, off air. Oh, fuck. Who the fuck did we say Kevin Lee should fight? Oh, we said the loser of Johnson Gaethje. That'd be dope, right? Uh, I would or say give him winner of Johnson Gaethje. Yeah, the winner, the winner, winner, the winner. Yeah, 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 that makes more sense. As a matter of fact, depending on how that fight goes, maybe give the loser to Michael Chiesa. Okay. Like, maybe. If, if it's a close fight, like, if someone doesn't get the doors blown off of them, maybe give him Chiesa. If it, not, Chiesa, yeah, I equate to two. I feel like it'd be a good Yeah, one. I know, because I know Kevin Lee's current mindset is I want Habib in Detroit this December... Uh, the fight'll never happen. Because I guess Dana fight. did confirm they are going to Detroit though. Which mm. I won't be surprised. And I think that it was confirmed that it is happening in December. So I'm assuming I don't know if it's confirmed, but Bren uh not Brennan Shop. Somebody mentioned that they uh I mentioned earlier on the podcast, if you you know already, you heard it. Uh that uh someone said yeah, they're going to Detroit probably. Either way, that's smart. Rogan, you know, Kevin Rogan and Josh will be put on that pay per view because he has a, he talks a lot and he'll be able to sell it. Uh, oh, for sure. So yeah, and he, he would dresses do, up and all he that. would do good money on a Detroit card. Like yeah, uh, UFC has always done pretty well in that city, uh, even though they're not there very often. So that'd be interesting. Um, but yeah, overall, what do you think of the uh, Bellator and the UFC cards? Like, I like uh, them both. I like them both. If you were to pick your favorite of the two. Um, like, which did you have more fun at? Definitely Bellator because of the chaos. I agree, which is dumb because I feel like the UFC fights were probably better fights. Yeah, but Bellator was awesome. Maybe it was plus the plus the environment we were. Yeah, in, we were in a fuck. I think that had a big factor. jail. Yeah. Oh yeah, for people we didn't tell, there was the two biggest Chael fanboys. Oh of my god, all time. and they were losing their goddamn minds. Ric Flair moments and oh, oh man. man, it was fucking uh, oh, it was there were some fucking people in our audience at those fights. It was like all I remember. I had a poor and taste theater joke when I said, "If Chael loses, this guy's pulling out a gun." I'm glad I didn't say it out loud. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Well, the dudes behind us were seriously trying to commit suicide via alcohol. I'm pretty sure. So, yeah. it was a it was a crazy card. I I thought it was a fun weekend of fights. Um, let's see. Oh, we do have this weekend. We should mention briefly. PFL has uh, fights this weekend. John Fitch is fighting somebody, uh, which is their first official card. Is PFL the Professional Football Fighting League? Yeah, the. Yes, I know. Yeah, terrible name. The professional pro- Fight League. It's the Professional Football League. It's the Professional Wait, Fucking League, Chris. The professional Fucking League. That, see, that would be a dope name. Which is... Uh, the Professional Fucking League. That's I mean, it it's, what it is. it's also apt since John Fitch is on the main card. Yeah. And he is going to wrestle fuck whatever poor sap is in there with him, I have a feeling. So, uh, we will cover that next week. We will also cover breakdowns of the two big uh, cards that are coming up for the UFC. And, uh, yeah, we all, oh, I forgot to mention, I took a bunch of, uh, pictures and video for, uh, Summerfist 8 that happened at the Del Mar Fairgrounds. You find a link in the description to that card. Uh, I will go through and, um, break down, uh, you know what, maybe next week I'll talk about the specific fights, or maybe I'll, uh, We'll put a video up or something, maybe of uh, some of the some of the video and pictures I did. And we'll put that up on YouTube and on the website. But look for that content coming up. We, I got a bunch of great pictures of Sam Alvey cornering guys, and uh, it was a fun amateur card. I got a couple. I got a bunch of good pictures. I got some seats like literally on the front row, like right next to the hooker. That's uh, probably our artwork for this week. And uh, I recommend checking it out. Yeah, I thought it was a fun card, and I would definitely go see one next year. It's the eighth summer fist they've done at the Del Mar Fair, I've heard. I think they do that every year, an Amy card. So oh, I'm, yeah. So I might just start going to the Del Mar Fair once a year specifically for that, because that's kind of awesome. Like, seeing, a, seeing fights in the middle of a fucking fairgrounds environment like that is, like, 
kind of cool. So many dumb assholes in the audience who have never seen a fight before. Oh, Espe- yeah. Especially at the... Yeah, the people behind us at the theater. Oh, he's only 5'8"? Oh, Shit, he's my hat. No, I can take him. Those or people worse? sounded so much more... Because these were like just fucking families that happened to be at the fair at noon and sat down because they didn't want to walk for a little bit. And so, like, they literally... They were like, oh, wow. So is this going to be like some wrestling or... And these people start bludgeoning each other, and they're like, "Oh God! Oh, oh no!" <laughs> so it's it upsetting. Uh, some lady was breastfeeding her kid next to me. <laughs> it's fucking. It was a classic carnival amateur <laughs> MMA show. It's fucking amazing. So uh, I'll put those pictures up. Uh, check those out on thesoundofviolence.com. You can find us T S O V Pod on Twitter. Email the show this sound of violence at gmail dot com. Um, Chris, did you have anything else you wanted to plug? Oh man, I'm just stoked for next fucking week. Me Shit. too. Perfect. So we'll be back next week with all kinds of content and uh, yeah, like I said, we'll have uh, some interesting articles up on the show about Summer Fist Eight that happened at the Del Mar Fair. Uh, also, we are officially. I'm hoping. In the next week or two, going to be live on iTunes and everything. I finally finished converting all of our old files. Uh, Full disclosure, our old files on the podcast feed are going to be a lower audio quality. However, on our website or on uh, or on our YouTube, you can find the original high quality audio versions. Uh, So, if you want that, go there. And all of our uh, episodes going forward should be decent quality audio. I just didn't want to spend 250 bucks to upload our, all of our old episodes at high quality because what are we doing? I mean, you can find them at high quality if you're interested. So uh, go ahead and check that out and uh, look for us on iTunes here shortly, hopefully. So uh, I think that wraps up this episode. But oh, yeah. enjoy your weekend. Uh, check out PFL because that should be a shit show. And until next week, go do something decadent. We out. Later.